This is Jerry Ordway, the guy who killed Superman. Whatever you do, don't listen to Pinta Comics. Hey there, this is John from Pinta Comics. And I'm Lloyd, also from Pinta Comics. And I'm the other John, and uh, you get it by now. As you may know, we sometimes use language on this show that can be described as... Filthy. Okay. Reprehensible? Uh Uh-huh. Uh, crude? Sure. Nasty. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Come on, guys. We all know that it's just plain out gutter talk. You've been warned. Listen in. Welcome to the Pint Movie Invitational Series. Mm. You know, Ben Franklin once said, Eat to live. Don't live to eat. Huh? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't even get it out. Here, here's what I wanted to do. You ready? Here's a here's a hint for this week's episode of uh, of the Pint, which is an uh, episode of the Pint Movie Invitation. I'll give, I'll give you one quick hint before we get into it. Ding, 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 ding. You're not going to know what that is, but you know what? A couple of us do at the very least. If only we could play it. Maybe I'll throw in the beginning. Pine of Comics here, Sir John Manster, Johnny Ganache. And he's a special guest, Shawnee Mac, Sean McLaughlin. What's going on, man? Hey, guys. How you doing? How are you? So this is interesting. This is the first time ever. <laughs> this is the second time we've had one of the three of us bring our Pine Movie Invitational. I'm bringing mine. This week, and, and and we'll talk about that in a minute. But because you were here to do another show, uh, if you go back maybe a month or so, we did our Star Wars holiday special show where we talked about uh, you know <laughs> jerk off chairs and <laughs> and uh, <laughs> all kinds of weird shit that happened. B. Arthur, that. B. Arthur, uh, mud planets, <laughs> talisman diseases, jerk off and B. Arthur. Yeah, the same. Sense. They, they just they go right together. Jerking off and B. Arthur, <laughs> two different <laughs> two things that go together. You did it by hand. <laughs> So long. <laughs> <laughs> These are all wonderful callbacks to an episode that you heard a couple months ago, and we recorded 20, 20 minutes ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So, you you just happened to be here for a Pipe Movie Invitational. You were on an episode. You chose Gleaming the Cube. Um, and now you get to sit in because you were going to be here. Yeah. And you said, yeah, I'll graciously stay for a second episode and yeah. talk about this movie that, uh, that you picked. Yeah. I'm very excited to, to grill someone else. Yeah. Time. See? <laughs> see? I'm not under the lights here. There I, is had, a- you, had you never seen this before? I had not seen it until oh, this week. Nice. Okay. I All remember right. when it came out, but I have not seen it. You yeah. you remember when it came out? I do. I, I do too. I no, know. no, I do too. But like yeah. you, you, we it, both it, realize that this is not something most people remember. No, that's it, true. It, there's that a reason true. why I didn't see it. it they didn't market it the the way they should have. No, no, definitely not. <laughs> because when it came out, I didn't realize it. It had like the dark humor yeah. aspect to it. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, this movie just looks. It, the line with the, you know he was licking me that one <laughs> that was prominent in the TV spot yep. and I'm like this movie looks stupid I'm sorry <laughs> it, it, no it's okay we're we're yeah. gonna find out how you feel about it but uh, <laughs> but look, we're gonna hand it over to Lloyd because this is my episode <laughs> right we're gonna be doing John's episode pretty soon by the way did you get that did it come in yet or no not yet okay so we're waiting on John's movie I don't even I had uh, because of the weather this week my my comic book shipment was delayed a week oh okay All a right. week. Oh. Whole damn week for you. Hey, not a week. week. That's that's tough. Now that's, you can't that's re- a month and a week. That is a month and a week. <laughs> and, now, and now you can't read the shit that you're gonna hate anyway. Well, I'm I'm way behind. So yeah, I just read three issues of one series this this afternoon. You only buy good stuff, though, right? <laughs> no, <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no he still he still reads shit. <laughs> yeah, I do. <sighs> John hate read hate reads. Is there anything you're hate reading right now that you're you don't like, but you're just continuously reading? No, 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 no. I'm well. There's what is your droppage rule? I never asked you that. Like where five issues and then I'm done. Five. Yeah. So five and an ongoing. What if it's a what if it's a twelve issue mini? I generally if if it's a mini series, I want it, I want the whole thing. I'm not gonna drop it. 
Oh, so, so you're gonna you're gonna even if you buy issue three, hate I it. Bought all of Countdown to fifty two. So, did so. I. wow. So did I. I gave. I think I've talked about this before. I gave fifty two fucking weekly issues. Thank you, Dan Didier. I did the same thing, and I gave that away uh, as. Uh, to uh, children's hospitals, and I feel like I didn't help those kids yeah, out yeah. at all. I, yeah. I think I might have done the same thing. I gave them to a, a library that was turning them into wallets. Yeah. Well, you know what? At least someone's able to store condoms in their money and those fucking <laughs> things, because that, that book sucked. Yeah, it did. I think mine lasts about three. Three? If, I, if, I, if I'm still not into it, I'll just drop it at three. If, yeah. if it makes it to five, it usually sticks with me. That's the thing. Okay. But, uh, yeah, if... If if I read the first issue and I really don't like it, eh, it's easy. It's an easy drop. Right. Now, it's a little bit more difficult for me now because I'm ordering things two months. There's in always that second issue swing sometimes, though. Yeah, yeah. You there know, is. there's been books I've read the first issue and gone, eh, and then the second issue is like, it, okay, yeah, it's a bit, you drove big it home. difference. Yeah. yeah, I don't have a hard set on my end, but I do know when I get to a point. My problem is this is what my problem is, is because I'm always so far behind. I end up buying things and I'll end up buying like nine issues of something mm-hmm. and not have read it. Never had read any. Yeah. And then I read two and I'm like, yeah. fuck. Yeah. Well, that's <laughs> what I did with both, money, yeah. both of the dreaming and doomsday clock. Well, I've doomsday got them clock, all, but I haven't read any. Doomsday yet. clock's a fucking shit pile. So uh, and, 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 there's and only one more. There's only one more at this point. Yeah, you're going to wait another year By the time you hear it. this, it'll be out. Well, that's the funny part. Okay, so, yeah, you, so you, you hope so. We're in, we're yeah, in, true. We're in <laughs> true. December. We're in December recording this right now. Yeah. And it's supposed to be out in the next like week or two. Yep. And I'll probably put this out like in February or late January. I wonder if it will have been out by the time <laughs> this episode comes out. I'm trying to remember when it was due originally. Oh, Wasn't uh, that like last? 2016, I think. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what a fucking waste. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Lloyd. I'm going to turn it over to you because usually I get to ask the questions about uh, about the movie, about what, the movie, what yeah. was brought. Go ahead. Well, this will be our first actual pint person bringing their own movie. When you, when you mine did didn't it, really count because I wasn't. Yeah, it counted. You always counted. You right, counted I always counted. Right. You counted right here. <laughs> counted in the heart. Right. Counted in the heart. All right, so John, what are you bringing us today, and uh, why is it so special to you? Okay, let me tell you. I'm bringing the 1999 dark comedy horror. I don't know how to describe this movie. Horror comedy, I guess. Horror comedy, Ravenous. Okay? Ravenous. I remember going to the theaters in early 1999. You saw this in the theater? No, no, no. Oh, okay. I remember seeing the trailer. Okay. And I remember seeing the trailer and going, what the fuck is this? <laughs> right? Like, w- like, the trailer, it seemed like it was now, again, mind you, you know, you're just seeing the trailer, uh, Civil war yep. There's something going on here. It's, it, it's a period piece. Yeah. And then it seems like there's conflict amongst characters, and there seems to be... I, I just didn't know. The, I, I, the I, cast was interesting. The cast was interesting. So, um, was this was that. right around the time. So Guy Pierce is like is the main yeah. star of this movie. And this was right after he kind of hit with Ellie Confidential, yeah. uh, which broke him and Russell Crowe at the same time, two, two Aussies. Yeah, uh, broke him, all right. They, <laughs> <laughs> um, so anyway, so I remember seeing the trailers in the theaters for this thing. And never seen it in the movies because I think literally it was in and out of theaters pretty quickly. See, I don't remember this movie at all until you guys mentioned it to me about a year ago. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's usually how it rolls with this thing. Yeah. Uh, it's not It's not a very popular movie. Um, for me, uh, I was living at that time. It was before I was living uh, in an apartment with my wife. I had a roommate. And I, my way of life was I used to rent a ton of movies at Tommy K's in Hamden. I lived oh, there in, you uh, go. I lived in, uh, I think at the time of this, I think I lived in Hamden. And um, I just used to go to Tommy K's and rent movies. Tommy K's was a local video joint here in uh, Central Southern mm-hmm. Connecticut, and um, and I, I rented this. And I remember watching it by myself, and I remember being just like floored by like this is a different fucking movie. Now, when you're watching a movie by yourself that you really like for the yeah. first time, don't you wish that someone was there to share it with Sometimes, you? Sometimes, yeah. Or yeah. I, I, if, if, if I don't always wish someone was there, I want to tell someone. Right. I want to go, fuck, you got to watch this, right? And, and and kind of like one of the reasons I chose this movie was because it's not talked about a lot, but the other half of it is is that within a few years, you know, I kind of had I'd met and known John, and just through one of our many interactions, we talked about this movie, and he yeah. loved it. Yeah. And I remember Which thinking... Which is rare. Which is good that you both love a movie. Well, and this is what folds into the reason I chose it is because I know we've done a lot of these invitationals, and I know they're not always like you know. John always does a good job and always soldiers on. He soldiered on through adaptation, which he hated. Mm -hmm. He soldiered on through you know uh, other things that he probably didn't love very much. Gleaming the cube. Gleaming the cube. (laughs) Gleaming the cube. (laughs) When you're gonna go skateboarding down the avenue, you're gleaming the cube. Gleaming the cube. Gleaming the cube. I'll I'll say this for Gleaming the Cube and some of the other movies too. Is like after after watching them and then doing the episode, it's much more entertaining at that point. But yeah, adaptation. If anyone ever 
put a gun to my head, I probably would <laughs> never watch that again. So. <laughs> hey, again, I told Sean this in the, uh, in the last episode as well. The Gleaming the Cube episode, people were, were, were waiting for it. <laughs> yeah. This movie, you, were, you weren't the only person of your age range that had a, uh, an affinity for this movie. Yeah. Uh, Sal from Robert Barron's Inc. was like, when's that fucking cube? Because we recorded that. Like, in With the, that you know, fucking cube getting gleamed. Well, yeah. As, yeah, as we often do, we record and then it doesn't come out for a while. Uh, and, and Sal was like, you know, you told me you fucking recorded Gleam of the Cube. Where is it? You know, I'm like, calm down. Go hey, watch your VHS copy of that. Yeah, movie. Really? Let me ask of the two Christian Slater movies, yeah. which did better for uh, the downloads. You know, I honestly. Heather's and Gleam of the Cube. Heather's and Gleam of the Cube. They, they were pretty close. Yeah. They're pretty close. So the, mad about Heather's. The, the, the <laughs> lowest downloaded episode we I had. I was on that episode. The, yeah. You, got, you, you, you got sick. Was it sick? Or you were sick that night. Was that what it was? Yeah. Because you watched yeah. Heather's? He, no, no. I watched, <laughs> was it sick? I, I thought something happened in my vehicle. Okay, yeah, you think your truck. I don't down. know. So, whatever happened, it was last minute, and I couldn't make it here, and I was so mad because I had so many lines that I wanted to bring up in that movie. <laughs> the lowest downloaded episode of the Pint Movie Invitational, and I say this because I want to bring it up again. It's a shame on these fucking people for not downloading this and watching the movie. Is everybody everybody, everybody wants, wants some? some. Oh, yeah. great movie! Fucking, have you seen Come that? On. I have not, but that was recent, right? It was couple, uh, couple three years? or four years ago. Yeah. It is the uh, it's Richard Linklater. It is the it is the spiritual sequel to Days and Confused. It's better than Days Confused. Oh, really? <laughs> definitely, I yeah. love Days and Confused. Yeah. So I'm not a huge fan of Days and Confused, and it's it's different. Yeah, it follows a, a group of uh, of college uh, a baseball team, and it's like three days in their life. And it was it was brought to us by our friend Chad. And honestly, I remember thinking, "Oh fuck!" Like this movie, and we all we loved all it. loved it. Yeah. We all enjoyed the hell out of it. No, and right? None of us had seen it before. None of us had no, seen no, it. No, yeah. none of us had seen it. It was and, awesome. Uh, it was very good. <laughs> Off the it, it, like, I, I was just recently thinking, I got to pick this up because I want to watch it again. Yeah. No way! I take that back. I had seen it, but I was have, I had the flu at the time. Yeah, you said you watched I, it, yeah, but I, you were like delirious. I was drugged <laughs> out. Yeah, <laughs> <It was delirious. laughs> you said it's the spiritual successor to. Days of Confused, it's, but it, is, is it the same time period or just after? Uh, no, it's, it's just the, after. It's the college okay. year. It's like 1980. It's 1980, okay, yeah. but none it's of the characters. A piece and, none of the yeah, characters so, are from yeah. Days and Confused, so it's not like you're right, seeing right, the same right. kids. But like Days and Confused was like 76, right? 76. Yeah. This is like the fall of 1980. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think they actually said that in the yeah. beginning, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, we, we talked about it on that episode. There's a there's a countdown in this movie, <laughs> and it's the only movie I've ever seen where the countdown ends up with Basically, nothing. Basically, it's a countdown yeah. to the end of the movie. Yeah. Countdown to the end of the movie. Basically. Most movies, when they have a countdown, you're like, okay, well, 3 o'clock the next day, we're going to drop the money off to get the kidnapping yeah. victim back. And every time they just get to the countdown again, then nothing happens. It's just like you're literally By watching way, three days in someone's life. Uh, but no, it's just that. So get out there. Totally, watch watch yeah. Everybody Wants Some with an yeah. exclamation point. And then listen to the podcast. Yeah, listen to the podcast. So yeah, Ravenous. Uh, I figured it'd be a good one for us to talk about. Uh, get people out there, maybe to watch it. Yep. And because uh, this is this is uh, it's twenty years old. Uh, Did this make your yes. number one of 1999? Not number one. My number one was number Office one. Space. Oh right, yeah. Uh, we did. did we did, did this our make episode. Both our lists. Both our lists. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And I regret the hell out of not having it on my list. Oh, see. Yeah. So yeah, because I had only seen it once at that time. I, I didn't even know it was in 1999. Yeah. I remember seeing the. Uh, I don't remember. A, a video promo or anything like that, but I remember television promos a lot. Yeah, and it came out and disappeared. It was one yeah. of those movies that. Just, oh, this movie it, it didn't do <laughs> yeah. well. This movie withered out. It withered out. Well, because so so I guess we'll get into the movie, right? Uh, yeah, we'll get to the cast in a second. But this movie suffers from not being able to be <laughs> properly. Advertise it, yeah. it probably could, but it'd be very hard. Marketing it is very difficult because it does cross. All kinds of genres. I mean, just the fact that it's a period piece is one thing, right? And then you slap everything else on top of it. Yeah. It's uh, how would you describe this tough. movie, Sean? Oh God, um, <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I'm jumping ahead, but it's a it's it's a, a, a vampire movie disguised as a cannibal movie set in what uh, eighteen forty seven Mexican American yeah. War. Yeah. Um, God, I, it's tough. You're right. It's tough to describe. Yeah, you can't really nail it down. It, right, there's so much going on. So imagine if you were the guy that they brought you this movie and yeah. said, "Make the marketing campaign for it, <laughs> and we want this thing to sell tickets." Yeah, you know, like oh, well, first of all, it's a period movie. Those don't generally do as well. And then secondly, it might look like a war movie from the trailers, yep. but it's not. <laughs> no. uh, it's about after war. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, it's a vampire theme. 
but instead of vampires, we use uh, Wendigo and yeah, uh, yeah. and the cannibal, uh, the Native American and Wendigo yeah. myths and cannibalism and stuff yeah, like I that. I don't get yeah. the vampire part of it myself. Oh, well, I, I definitely picked up on that after watching it today because I watched it this morning. Yeah. yeah. And I never really thought about it as a vampire movie yeah. until today. I always like, thought of it as a vampire movie. Like, Holy shit, this is like a vampire movie. Yeah, it seemed like it to me. You know? Yeah. No, I, I taste your turn. You know? Right. Yeah. It's, it's very. Um, Seductive, yes. in, mm-hmm. in the way you get into that, so it's it's pretty cool. I like that. I once again picking up new things. I mean, I never looked yeah. at it that way. Yeah, so. I always looked at it as kind of a vampire movie. Yeah, because yeah. that's kind of like you know, it's it's the allure of not you know this power you could have should you have it, and that's right. the, that's the central fight between the two main characters of the oh, movie: ethics, yeah. morality, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, okay, before yeah, we get into Lloyd. the idea of the movie, Lloyd, do you want to go over the cast list? Yeah, well, this movie came out March nineteenth, nineteen ninety nine. Budget of this movie, yeah, was twelve million dollars. They didn't even come close to making that. They made two million. Two million bucks. <laughs> two million. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is why I was able to rent it on May first of nineteen ninety nine. I watched uh, this the night I watched Phantom Menace at the theaters. <laughs> I got home and watched this. <laughs> Jeez, that was the same year. Shit. I don't. I don't remember when I saw it the first time. I, I just. I, I do. I'm pretty it was sure. Recently. <laughs> yeah, you I, gave I'm, me my copy. I'm yeah. pretty sure I watched it on. I, I must have had cable at the time, and I watched it on on a cable network or something like that. And that's when I was like, I have to own this. Yeah. And I yeah. went out and bought a copy. Well, that that. Now, is there a good Blu-ray for this? Or there you know, is Shout features? Factory. Well, uh, I did one a couple years ago, and really? I have it. Because uh, right. the story is, I think I've, t- I've talked about this before with this movie, is that when it came out, you know, in, in like 2000 on DVD, that was, you know, the VHS was over at that point, or getting to be close yeah, to over. Yeah, definitely- I had already gotten my first DVD player, and I remember wanting this movie and not being able to find it because it, you know, didn't do well. It wasn't like very prominent. You weren't finding it at Walmart, yeah. Best Buy. And like probably like five years later, I was at like a FYE or something, and I found my first copy ever, and it was like twenty eight bucks. Mm. And I'm not the guy to do that, but because it was, the, it was the, I had it in my hand, I bought it. So I have the I have the DVD copy for years. That's so sad. And then I, I know because I bought I, mine for like seven bucks at a Walmart. I know, and I, I, <laughs> I mean, and at that on, point on the discount rack, I was you know? always looking for it. And then after that, I started finding it everywhere else. Uh, um, and then about funny. five years ago, I bought the Blu-ray. All right. And uh, I'll I'll take a picture of it and put it on our uh, on our Facebook page. The it's one of those ones where the – so the, the poster of it, the regular poster is kind of like a Guy Pearce and, and uh, Robert Carlyle. With a dagger in the with middle. With a dagger in the yeah. middle. It's pretty cool, pretty cool looking. <clears throat> the Shout Factory uh, Blu-ray cover is, is like shitty fucking clip art. It's terrible. Ugh. It's got uh, Robert Carlyle, um, Guy Pearce, and David Arquette, who is like way down on the list of <laughs> yeah, like main yeah. characters. It's got like their it's disembodied heads on top of a bunch of like bones. <laughs> oh. It is. I'll show it to you for you. It's okay. fucking. Right. It's barfy. It's wow. not good at all. <laughs> Interesting. All right. So directed by Antonia Bird. Yep. It was passed on. Who's yeah. passed on? What else did she do? That was. Uh, she did a movie really, called Priest, yeah, which Priest. is like her right. biggest thing. Yeah. Right. But she did something else too. Uh, well, I wrote no, down I here remember. the other. I didn't know what it was, but she did a movie uh, called Priest and one. Oh, Mad Love. There was a movie called Mad Love with in the mid '90s with Drew Barrymore and uh, the kid who played Robin. Where they were like a couple of like psychopaths in love, and they were driving through the country, and you know what I'm talking about, Sean? Uh, yeah, I think yeah. so. She directed that. That was the like kid her. Played yeah. Robin. <laughs> what was his name? Chris. Uh, Chris O'Donnell. Oh yeah. Right. Chris O'Donnell. She directed that. Uh, she did a Chris O'Donnell movie. Remember that guy? <laughs> Apparently he's on TV now. So he's the uh, CSI in Los Angeles, right? I'm in CSI Los or Angeles. Or N- no NCIS. Uh, Is he really uh, Los Angeles? I think. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Him and LL. <laughs> Ladies love Cool James. <laughs> uh, and written by Ted Griffin. Ted Griffin. Here's Ted interesting. Griffin. Ted Griffin uh, has two really, you know, he doesn't have a lot of credits, but he is the screenwriter and writer of the Ocean's Eleven remake, the uh, the 2001 uh, uh, Clooney uh, Brad Pitt thing. Oh, yeah. He created a show. Ted Griffin created a show that I recommend anybody that can find it to watch. It was on FX for one season, got canceled. It was called Terriers. Donald Logan, I can't yeah. remember the other guy. And you ever see this? No, but I okay. like Donald Logue. Donald, Donald Logue plays an ex-cop who's an alcoholic or ex-alcoholic cop. He's not a cop anymore either. He's the ex of both. <laughs> um, he's a private eye, and he lives in this like Venice Beach type community. And his partner, and it's a character actor. I can't remember his name. Is an ex like cat burglar thief who is working with him as, as private eyes. 
It was on one year, I think it was after like Sons of Anarchy. Yeah. And it didn't do well. It was a fucking fantastic show. It never came out on DVD. I don't think it ever came out on Blu-ray. Uh, at one point, it was on some of the streaming services. And it's one of those things that just like lost the time. But yeah. if you ever get a chance to see t- uh, Terriers, uh, I and I didn't realize until we were doing research for this, Ted yeah. Griffin created that and wrote a lot of that. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, moving on to the cast, <laughs> this is now our, our third movie, I believe, where... This actor has been in two of our point invitational movies now. Guy Pierce. Guy Pierce. Memento. Memento. Oh, yeah. And now Ravenous. Yes. Yep. So in addition to Christian Slater, and I think <laughs> oh, maybe it was John Carpenter. Well, uh we did two with uh, Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell. We yep. did uh, Escape from New York and we did the thing. Yep. Now Guy Pierce makes the list. Yeah, and he played uh He plays um, Captain John Boyd, who newly was newly uh, promoted Captain John Boyd. Newly promoted basically from a coward. What he had a medal in cowardice. Well so, <laughs> That's what he says. Yeah. Yeah. I I, I, I love single handedly capture the <laughs> Mexican, the Mexican outpost, yeah. something. <laughs> I love that whole scene. That that yeah. whole scene was fantastic. Yep. Right where he, he just lies down, pretending to be dead. He is just straight up, like whether you want to call it cowardice or or just like freezing in battle. He just straight up gives yeah. up. We don't we don't really know. You don't yeah. know, and, you know, and and they don't yeah. really make him out to be like a like a yellow coward. Right. He just seems like a guy who doesn't want to fucking fight or yeah. die in a fight. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> You know, whether you want to call that a coward or not. It, for all we know, it could be PTSD. He's done with fighting. Right. Mm-hmm. You know, we don't we don't know that. So, And you get the great scene real quick uh, when he um, he basically, so he ends up in the Mexican-American War laying down and playing possum, right, pretending he's dead. He ends up getting thrown into a cart of a bunch of bodies, and this is kind of how the whole thing starts. Right, right on the bottom. Is right on the bottom, and as he says later on, his, uh, his commanding officer's open skull uh, drains into his mouth, <laughs> and... This is the first point where we start to, the vampire effect, the yeah. Wendigo effect, the cannibal effect. He gets this fucking surge of energy. Right. He crawls out of this pile of fucking bodies, and he goes behind enemy lines and breaks a dude's neck and captures the outpost. The army doesn't look at that as much of a win, because strangely, <laughs> he straight up admits to them that he, like, he fucking, like, played dead. I thought that was weird. I think yeah. that's weird, but it's like, it's like he's an honest character. He doesn't tell them, oh, I, I you know, he just straight up says, I froze. I pretended I was dead, mm-hmm. and then I, you know, I, how'd you I, do it, Boyd? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and instead of, and instead of fucking, they have to do something with him, so they promote him and they tell him, "We're promoting you to get you out of our hair. Right? We're gonna, we're gonna send you to this outpost. Yeah, in that's the what you do nowhere. with people who can't do it, right? Right. You just, you, you give them a new job, get rid of them. Yep. But I want to talk about the dinner scene in the beginning. Oh, I know. The meat's it's just. Uh, Try oh, to wait, open a sh- open a movie like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I still, I was watching it with. My wife. Okay. And uh, she hadn't seen it yet either. Is your and wife mad had... at me for choosing this? <laughs> no, no. She, oh, okay. she liked it okay. too. Okay. I mean, there's weird. She, she's like, what, you know, what's going on here? I, I can't answer that. I haven't seen it yet either. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that, that, the, the cuts of steak, I assume, is what they were eating in the I beginning. So. Yeah. All the blood on the plates and everything. And you hear the chewing noises yeah. and the cutting noises. So, so this, this scene is, is his promotion party. Yeah. And you have I don't know twenty officers and and uh, you know all this and they're sitting at this giant picnic style military table and they've got a plate and this is the weird part about it is that this is 1847 you think they this meal is the, we don't do vegetables in the fucking U.S. <laughs> Army in 1847 here's what we do Let's we get some do meat. the bloodiest <laughs> fucking meat steak you've ever seen with some flies on it too if you saw yeah, that yeah. and bread. <laughs> <laughs> this is how we're gonna we're gonna celebrate our victory in the, in the Mexican American War and and Captain John Boyd's appointment <laughs> to Fort Spencer in snowy Colorado in California by eating the biggest fucking steak you've seen since Great Outdoors, <laughs> cooked only marginally with a couple of fucking flies on it. But you know what? We got bread <laughs> <laughs> and the drink, sir. Meatballs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> did Did you immediately say to your wife like, "Let's have steak tonight"? After that, or I, yeah, I thought about it. And, uh, <laughs> she didn't, so <laughs> that went nowhere. <laughs> All right, Lloyd. Next yeah. on the cast list. Uh, so then we got Robert Carlyle as two two things. Uh, first, F W Calhoun. Yeah. Is that how you say it? Calhoun. Yeah, it's Col- Colquhoun is how it's Col- spelled. Col- yeah, it's weird. It's, it's one of those weird Scottish names like McLaughlin or McLaughlin. Or- <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and I don't know how to real, say it. Real Scottish. Yeah. Calhoun. <laughs> that's the Irish, I'm sorry. The movie. <laughs> Calhoun. Uh, then he comes back as Colonel Ives in the second half. Of the oh, movie. we'll get into that. Yeah. yeah. Why does he have two names? We'll get into that. Yep. 
Yeah. So you might know him from uh, Train Spotting, The Full Monty. Yeah. And TV. He was in Stargate Universe. Yep. He was. Uh, yep. He's been uh, in quite a bit. Of and quite a yeah. bit more than that. He was yeah. a bad guy in a Bond movie. He was. In yeah. one of, he was one of the right. Pierce Brosnan movies. Mm-hmm. He's been in a couple of really bad movies. Too. Yeah. Really bad. That movies. that Begbie character in Train Spotting though was great. That's the first time I ever oh, saw yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a good movie. He's That's a great the movie. best character. Yeah. Movie. Full Monty is one of my favorite movies of all time. Full Monty yeah. is oh, Full Monty is amazing, yeah. too, because if you ever see an interview with him about the Full Monty, he had just gotten off train spotting, which was a huge, you know, kind of independent success. He needed to put on weight. Well, he, he gets off he gets off a train spotting and he's like he he's riding this high. And they make the Full Monty, and the director of the Full Monty, I guess, lost control. And he said, like, every day on the Full Monty, they were convinced that he was, like, throwing his career away. Oh, yeah. And they hired a guy to come in and recut it. And the recut became what everybody... And it became uh, the biggest fucking British movie... Yeah, it was huge. ...of a couple, yeah. you know, uh, independent yeah. British movie. It's, uh, it's you know. one of the most uh, profitable films of all time. Yeah. It's, like, in the top 20. And he straight up mm-hmm. said, he goes, you would never know it during the making. He said, the making was a fucking nightmare. Wow. We were all convinced it was going to be the fucking end of our careers. <laughs> and then whoever the, the editor they ended up hiring or the director that took over at the very end, he said, we could not believe he put that movie together. Because, huh. you, you you know, you watch that movie. It's a fun movie. It's, yeah. it's, it's like uplifting kind of. And he's like, you would never feel that because it was such a piece of shit making that movie. Oh, no shit. Yeah, mm. yeah. And it is a good movie. That, yeah, that is a good it, movie. Yeah. And you see his ass in this one, too. You yeah. do see his ass in this one, too. <laughs> yeah, lovely. <laughs> Bonus. Uh, then you got David Arquette as Private Cleaves. Yeah. He's yeah. the cook. Uh, yeah, he's he's the cook. He's, he's a, a what, what, third billing on that? Really? Yeah, I believe so. Because, yeah. wow, he had maybe three lines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of goofy stuff. One of his only, like, big scenes is a, is a dream sequence. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even a real thing that happens. <laughs> he David, laughs a lot. I guess if you don't know David stumped. Arquette, you know, yeah. uh, Buffy... The screen movies, Bone Tomahawk. That's right. He oh, was yeah. one of the guys in the beginning Bone of that. Tomahawk, yeah. 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 He was a wrestler, right? He was a wrestler. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he was. He, he, he he's a brother of more famous people. He pulled Courtney <laughs> Cox in for like <laughs> fucking like fifteen <laughs> years. He's a wrestler right now. I think he's the NEW heavyweight <laughs> champion. <laughs> Is he really? <laughs> the independent scene. Yeah. Oh, he still wrestles because he did that movie with uh, yeah, Ready to Rumble. Ready to Rumble. The WCW right? guys. With, um, yeah. with, who was the other one in that? Uh, Scott Kahn. Scott Kahn, right. Oh, he did Lars and the Real Girl. And, and Rose McGowan. <laughs> that wasn't him. Wasn't that him? That was... Um, uh, no, I, oh, this is where I mess these two up all that the time. That was uh, right? Baby Goose. What's his name? <laughs> Ryan Gosling. <laughs> 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 the Baby Goose. <laughs> That's right. Uh, all right. So got? moving on, we got Jeremy Davies. I love Jeremy. Oh, I, I love him in this movie. I uh, love him in general. Jeremy Davies is See, you guys awesome. are you guys are uh, like on the polar opposite when it comes to this guy cuz I it, you know, if I ever saw him in a room, I'd have a hard time not hitting him. Yeah. Really? <laughs> he's one of those guys that just gets on your yeah. nerves. He's yeah, a, it's matter- like <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's one of the greatest lines in the history of film, but fuck you Jeremy Davies, you're the awful actor. Oh, come on. You didn't I was, like I thought he I was don't great like in him this. in anything. He he almost drove me off a lost. Well, he was private top. <laughs> he was great and justified. Yeah, all I so, remember him from is Twister. <laughs> he was in General <laughs> Hospital. The best thing was about Twister for all you fans yeah, out there. Twister. I don't. I didn't get. Did he get Twister. blown away in Twister? Please tell me. That. Uh, no, he survived. Fuck. Unfortunately, he was in General yeah. Hospital. Yep, he was. In, I don't know the character's name. Really, the reason he was in Saving Private Ryan. He, well, he was. Yeah, awful. he was. He was the coward in that. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah. That's him. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The he best was, thing about him in Justified was the fact that he played a shit. <laughs> he was. He was. He was part of that turdy family. Yeah. He was pretty big character in Lost. Oh uh, yeah, he was uh, Daniel um, yeah. Faraday. Faraday, yeah. one, of the, yeah. one of the best, best deaths. <laughs> yeah, and I guess he played some characters in best the uh, Arrow, Arrowverse. Did he you know, really? All those CW shows, yeah. Really? Yeah. In, in Arrow, and he I would played think... da- uh, Charles Manson in the uh, I could Helter see that. Skelter movie. I could see that for sure. Yeah. I don't think he got away from it. No, he didn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right, who do we have? All right, next we got uh, Jeffrey Jones. <laughs> As Colonel Hart. Got to dance around Jeffrey Jones a little bit. Yeah. yeah. He's, a got, lot. He's, he's got a little worked. sketchy stuff going yeah, on. Yeah, let's see. Yeah. A little bit of Poor a, Jeffrey Jones. But you'll know him as uh, Ferris Bueller, what, the principal? Yeah, he was in Beetlejuice. Je- Jeffrey Beetle Jones had a, had a very, Amadeus. very prolific career in the late 80s, early 90s. He Howard was like the Duck? Everything. Howard the Duck, yeah. Uh-huh. Yep. Yeah, looking at kitty porn. Okay, let's move on to that. Right, moving on. Uh, John Apparently, Spencer, multiple, multiple times. Yeah, not not yeah. like once. Yeah, so yeah. You know. 
Uh, uh-huh. John Spencer as General Slauson. Yep, and he died a few years after he this. He died so. in 2005. This yeah. was his last movie role. Because right, after this, he, he signed on for the on West, West Wing. Wing. He was on West Wing. And so this was the last film he did, and then he did the West Wing for several years and died during yeah. the run of that, I guess. He, he played a lot of detective-type roles yeah, throughout yeah. his career. Yeah. He's, got, he's got that kind of like that detective, <laughs> military guy vibe. Yeah. Uh, now, this next guy I'm not familiar with, Steven Spinella as Major Knox. I was reading up on him. He, uh, I think he's also a playwright too. <laughs> just the funny thing was when I was reading his IMDb stuff, they just have the weirdest like little like little bit toids, you know, about people. Yeah. And it was like, you know, um, he's he's in a bunch of TV shows. He's he, I think he's written a couple of plays, and then it just said he is openly gay. I'm like, yeah, right. <laughs> I read that too. Somewhere. I'm like, well, I guess I that, that counts. <laughs> Sean, do you feel better it's, now knowing that the uh, <laughs> that the doctor is openly gay? In yeah, because I had my suspicions. Yeah, but yeah. it's confirmed. <laughs> it's confirmed. He'll be contributing to the stew. <laughs> so <laughs> concerned about that. <laughs> <laughs> and then the uh, great Stu a la Major Knox, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Neil McDonough as Private Reich. Yeah, love, love Neil McDonough. Love him, yeah. yeah, he's awesome. Love Neil McDonough. I can't get enough of this guy. And I wanted to bring this up one of the last There's times we talked about. It's been on the CW. Yep. Yeah, he was uh, <laughs> Damian, Damian Dark. Dark. Yeah. Yep. yep. And and unjustified. <laughs> and he was Dum Dum Dugan. Dum Dum Dugan. Yeah. Unjustified. Band of Brothers. Yeah. Lieutenant Hawk yeah. in uh, oh, Star Trek First uh, Next Star uh, Trek First, first Contact. First contact. <laughs> yeah. And uh, it's funny. that up every time with him. Because he was that was the first time I ever saw him. First time I ever saw him. Well, because in that movie they they give him enough of a role that you're supposed to think you know who this guy is. Like they just insert well, him into he's the, the new red shirt. He is the new red shirt, but like they they act like you're like, "Oh, it's Lieutenant Hawk. Like, who the fuck is this guy?" <laughs> He has a he has a stipulation in his contract. I yeah, read this. I've seen this. You've yeah. seen this. Yep. He will not kiss an actress in anything. Yep. He's oh, really? married and he's like devoutly Christian yep. and he will it's in his fucking writer. If there's a scene that he has to kiss someone, he will not do it. I did not know that. Yeah. yeah. And it's funny too because oh, cool. uh, a couple of years ago my wife binge watched Desperate Housewives. And he was on that for a couple of years. Oh, he really? played one of the, you know, these women on that show, by the way, there was like four or five of them. They just got married over and over again. Mm-hmm. He played one of their husbands for a while. And he was, husband and the funny part was, seven. he was like husband number seven, but he <laughs> was also like a psychopath because yep. he always plays a psychopath. And I, so I don't remember ever seeing that and that, but I read it like a couple years later. It's like Neil McDonough has a, has wow. a, a yeah. writer. He will not kiss an actress no or kissing. anybody. He will and perform oral though. He will absolutely, <laughs> he will, he will take one on the pooper. <laughs> <laughs> he was also in the uh, Netflix uh, 1922 Stephen King movie. Oh, I never saw that. Yeah. And uh, the last one I got here is Joseph Running Fox as George. George. Uh, the Native American character. Yep. He was yep. in Porky's too. <laughs> he was in Porky's sure was. too, or he was in Porky's also. <laughs> Porky's <Yeah>. too. <laughs> the next day. <laughs> also openly gay. No, I don't know. No, I don't, think so. I don't know. <laughs> and uh, he did a stint on St. Elsewhere, and he played Geronimo in a TV movie. Jesus. Oh, shit. Cool. Huh. So that's what I got for the cast. All right, that's good. That's good. Where's the w- lone woman? I, I didn't get to Did her. you leave Martha out? <laughs> what is with you? Well, every I'm, every time leaving the lone woman. Well, I out, figured yeah. you know, like she actually a, had a lines dozen was enough. <laughs> no, you you you, you, did, you did well. I did look up the woman who played Martha, and uh, she hasn't done a whole lot, but she was, and you know, it it you feel like typecast saying like the guy who played Joseph was Geronimo, but the, you know, you're gonna have if you're a Native American and you're an actor, they're gonna put you out. She yeah. was in um, what was the Val Kilmer one uh, about the feds on the res on the reservation? It was a murder case. Oh. Oh mm. my God! That long ago. It was good too. Uh, Graham Greene was in it. I yeah. think. Yeah. Thunderheart. Mm, yes. She was in Thunderheart. No kid. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. So. Mm. Thunderheart. Yeah. So. Uh, so. There's, sh- there's one for you, Sean. There you go, Sean. <laughs> Got it. All right. That's your next choice for the watch next that. time you're on. You get to pick that. We're going to oh, talk about. Watch that. Then gotcha. watch the first power, and then what was the other one that uh, Lou Diamond Phillips did with the uh, Renegades? Ren. No. Him and Kiefer Sutherland. Sutherland had the mustache. Oh God. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> So Sean, do you want to move anyway. us? You, you, <laughs> even though this is, a, let, let, I'm going to let you do this because you're you're the guest. So do you want to move us now into what's happening? So he he gets out to Fort Spencer. He does, and uh, Jeffrey Jones uh, brings him up to speed about everything going on with you know who's there and, and their role. 
That was yeah, a good all scene. The, all the characters. Really yep. well done where, where they go through everybody and say this. You know, I like that bit, yeah. too, because they say the Cleves is our cook. Yeah. Um, and uh, Knox, is, or Knox is the doctor. And Reich, he's our soldier. Yeah. Stay and, away and from him. They have <laughs> that, Stay away from him. <laughs> they have that great moment with Neil McDonough where. Don't get hurt. Where they're showing everybody. Yeah, don't get. Knox is a drunk, so don't get hurt. <laughs> and you get the little moment where you he's see a, everybody. He's a vet, not a doctor. Right. He's, right. A vet. <laughs> he's an ex-vet, right. But like, but, like, one of my favorite moments in the movie is mm-hmm. where, you know, he's introducing and he says, you know, and, and uh, Reich is our soldier and it's just Neil McDonough in a stream <laughs> yeah, with yeah, his shirt stream. off in a cold stream just <laughs> screaming. Now, <laughs> now, for you guys that saw the, the promo was back in the day. That was in it. That was in the promo. Yeah, that I was, that. It was right. right up there with the licking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was <laughs> like, I have no idea what this movie's supposed to be. Yeah. I watched the trailer on the Blu-ray before oh, I watched yeah. the movie. Yeah. I watched it, you know, early this week and just as like a exercise and even at the end of it, I went, I don't know if I'd see that, yeah. knowing I love this movie yeah. again because like the trailer, and it's it's one of those older trailers too. It's got the you know Captain John Boyd has been <laughs> sent to. It gives you nothing. It gives you you don't know. Like if you literally went to this movie, seeing the trailer, and then all of a sudden you get this like this cannibalism Wendigo vampire kind of thing. You go, what the fuck? Where yeah. did that come from? <laughs> well, just that opening scene at the, the dinner scene, and they're all just scraping the plates uh, and yeah. chewing it. <laughs> I mean, it's it, like, it was I cheerfully just see people disgusting. Walking it was out. totally disgusting. Yeah. It was totally uh, disgusting. Yeah. So, okay, John, so uh, yeah. he gets them to speed. Yes, and uh, <laughs> 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 then he sees um, a, a vision out the window. Yeah. And it turns out to be... Robert Carlyle there, yeah, um, who wandered into the fort <laughs> and uh, has tales of uh, you know a party, a, a party that he's traveling with that turned to cannibalism because they got stuck. Heavily influenced by the Donner Party story, mm-hmm. yeah, mm-hmm. heavily influenced. Says he was out there for three months. Uh, he's basically almost frostbitten. They have this whole scene where they strip him down and warm him up in a in a hot bath and wrap yeah. him up in a where am I in, a, in a, some some nice little uh, bearskin <laughs> blankets. And uh, and then the, what do they decide to do? Well, what, well, they ask him what he did. You know, how did he survive? He was out there three months. He's like, uh, well, well, first we ate the oxen, then we ate the horses, then we ate my dog, then we ate our belts, yeah, and then the, our shoes. By the time we got to the belts, we knew we were in trouble. Yeah, right. 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 He's basically <laughs> like that's that's where he's going. Uh, and he claims he was with I think five other people. Yeah, right? five, five people, people total, or five other people. A woman. Yep. He gives the whole rundown of his crew, too, um, Native American guy and all that stuff. This is the part that surprised me every time I see this movie, even though I know it's coming, is that you don't really get a sense of Jeffrey Jones's character in the beginning, other than he's, like, very content with just being here. Yep. Yeah. And, like, I'm cool with nothing happening. He says it. He goes, nobody comes through here. We're the outcasts. But, like, as soon as he hears that, he's like, we got to go save everybody. Yeah. Which, yeah. every time I see this movie, surprises me because... He doesn't seem like a man of action, but he, they, there's enough of his military sense there. That's what they're there for. He, he knows says, that he it, says it's our job. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. our job. He doesn't, doesn't seem matter. so much of a colonel as more of just a host. Right. Yeah. You know? Right. But it's it's just always kind of funny because when you first see him, you kind of get the feeling like something like this is going to happen. He's going to go, oh, well, that's yeah. too bad. <laughs> yeah. You know, but he, he does. He gets everybody together and then we move on and we end up going. Now it becomes a uh, kind of a, uh, a rescue mission. Yeah. Now before it starts to get creepy, yeah, and and, and I think it's important. Uh, we did kind of miss this. It is a little bit important to the plot later. Is when uh, Calhoun shows up, which is Robert Carlyle's character at this point. David Arquette's character and Martha have left to go get supplies. Yep. Right, they've never seen him. They've never dealt with him, right. so they don't know. And Knox stays at the fort. He was there the night he was there, but he's fucking drunk all the yeah. time. It's because there's too much bourbon in his bourbon. Too much bourbon in his bourbon. <laughs> so they go out on the road. John, they go out to find the cave. And what kind of weird stuff starts happening when we're trying to find the cave? Well, initially, you're, you're dealing with Carlisle's story is a little wonky. You know, they've got to find where the cave is. They don't know how far out it is. You're in Northern California in early spring, I'm guessing, because yeah. they, they never really stated, I don't think, a month. There's still a lot of snow. In yeah. There. Right. And and it's weird, too, because you get, like, really snowy areas and then and not so <laughs> snowy. Right. right. <laughs> Which is part of filming. Part of the reason, well, that, but it's also it, Northern California, so you never know. Filmed in Slovakia and yep. filmed in Czechoslovakia, and they said that when they went, it was uh, like the lowest snowfall in like 200 years. Oh, really? And that's why there's no, there's they wanted a lot of snow in this and movie, they couldn't get it, and they couldn't get it. <laughs> <laughs> Which is probably good because, I mean, half the time you're watching these people talk, and it's just clouds coming out of their mouths. Right. You could see mm-hmm. how cold it was. But I, they they make a couple of uh, stops, and the, was it the first stop after 
they they find some bones or something like that, and Jeremy Davies' character, whose name I forget, Toffler, Toffler, yeah. slips and falls, and he cuts himself on the on the tumble. Big gash in his yeah. like, ribs. And he's so quiet. Everything he does is yeah. whisper. You can't ever understand And everything him. he's doing is all, he's like trying to work out this stupid hymn in his head, and he's saying it out aloud, and you don't know what the fuck he's saying half the time. He's like, and then the Yeah, right. Like, I like I that. I just because, want to fucking strangle this guy. I like I liked that because I felt like this was a guy that spent way too much time uh, in this place. Well, I like the, yeah. the licking me scene because he was so quiet, like he was sleeping, right? Yeah. Well, he, and, and then he wakes up, and this this new guy, this the Robert Carlyle character, is, they're is all in licking a tent. him. Yeah. They're all in a tent together <laughs> after he gets his gash in him, and that's yeah. when the whole licking thing happens. It's just... God, that word gash cuts to the bone doesn't yeah, it yeah, yeah it does it doesn't matter what you're talking about it just yeah. <laughs> it just he's, i just when they they light the lantern and, and they're trying to figure out why he's screaming and he's like he was he's, he's, me. He, he's, he's, he's got he and, and carlisle's character yeah. got like blood on his face yeah. well, and he's and whatever they do i don't know if that's context they put on him or if it's just hitting his face with light just so his pupils dilate yeah, yeah. i think it's the light yeah because he's got ridiculously creepy eyes yeah. you know yeah. this for this whole movie and yeah Carlisle as an actor always like, especially I like him. especially Begbie yeah he comes across as like that kind of small guy that's like you wouldn't want to no. fuck with right. ever right. Right. Fucking like, psychopath yeah. the guy's gonna yeah. stab yeah. you you know what I mean like yeah. like you don't fuck with like I went to high school there was a kid uh-huh. I went to high school with who was kind of like, smaller in stature but everybody knew like that's you don't want to fuck with that yeah. dude <laughs> did you ever see Plunkett McLean <laughs> I've never seen that I- I've heard it's good right is that is that the one uh, or no I'm thinking of uh <laughs> Thinking of the shitty one he did with Samuel L. Jackson. That's another bad one. Okay, yeah. uh, the Formula Four Fifty One. Yeah, that was yeah. fucking awful. Plug, um, it, plug it, McLean. Now there's your period piece that just made that's the they're, they're the they were like the Scottish uh, bank robbers. Or something, yeah, right? it's yeah. fucking awful, and and he's in that, and it's just. <laughs> I like him. I like him as an I, actor. I like him too, but my god, that movie was so bad. I, I need to watch that for like speed two month or something. <laughs> you know, you know what's great about this movie when they're on their trek going, he was you know, going you? to the cave. And, <laughs> that was great, yeah. <laughs> but the music that the story. <laughs> <laughs> that was, it. was it morphine? No, no, brandy. Brandy. No, was it brandy? bourbon? Bourbon. Bourbon. bourbon now. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that was good. No, uh, but the music that propels the story, like the score, the soundtrack it's to this bizarre. movie, I is own the soundtrack. So good. Oh, oh, I want to get it. Yeah, this is the, you oh, know we, we, we play it. We play it on the radio all the time. Yeah, we, which the, uh, the, the, the theme. The theme. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Dun, 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 oh, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah. I got dun, it. Dun, dun. The whole thing is great, and the soundtrack is uh, a guy named Michael Nyman who is right. who is a conductor, and Damon Alburn. Yeah, from, from Gorillas. Uh, and Gorillas. Yeah. Um, and and the whole thing is. There's no orchestra. The whole thing, all the instruments are played by those two guys. It's like uh, chimes yeah. and yeah. bells and accordions. accordions and and it's so bizarre yeah. and so perfect. It's one of the most memorable, and it's not one of those scores you throw in on the background when you're reading because <laughs> it's fucking weird, <laughs> yeah. but it's it, super good. It yeah. definitely drives and affects the, the uh, scenes that you're in. Absolutely. Yeah, the, that the, the, helps, that like theme, that, that yeah. theme to me is... Because I love this movie, it, 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 it just yeah, it's one of the most memorable themes of all time, and it's for a movie that nobody's ever heard of. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The first time it really stuck with me, and I'm like, what the hell? This doesn't fit. Is when he escapes. I know I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but when he escapes the hole, yeah. Oh and right, getting, yeah. and I'm like, this music does not fit the gravity of the situation at all. <laughs> I know it adds a lightness to it just because it's totally so it. yeah. yeah, whatever, like chimey and stuff. Yeah, well, I mean, but also well, uh, that that whole scene when he period. gets out too, yeah. it's it's almost comedic. Yeah, you know, you think about it. <laughs> Run. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of comedy in this movie. It, it yeah, is certainly it's, it's very dark. Yeah. I mean, what, once you get, I mean, you know, and we're getting there, but once you get to the whole second half of the movie, yeah. It becomes this like case of like like one guy who nobody believes, and <laughs> mm-hmm. he's stuck in this situation where he knows what's happening, right. yeah. but nobody around him like seems to care or want to listen to him. Yeah, it is. It's like a comedy of errors. Um, I don't know. And yeah. even even Robert Carlyle's acting as they're outside of the cave. Oh, it's creepy. He just gets all bizarre. Yeah. He's like digging well, a hole with yeah. his hand. Well, he has the knife he's, in there. He's, he's yeah. getting the knife. It, well, but, the, but it's still it's just Reich, so crazy. Yeah, it makes like, you like, what is going on? Reich figures it out when they're in the hole. Yeah. I mean, right away. He's like, oh, yeah. it's a fucking trap! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So so we get we get to the cave. But yeah. That, he I mean, licked him. The, once once he licks him, that's when they realize this guy's fucking creepy. And, so and they, they manacle him. They manacle him. At his 
request. I was yeah. having a nightmare. I woke up with my mouth on his wound. <laughs> yeah, because that, that's plausible. Because <laughs> that's what I do. Sean, quick question. Yeah, I was going to say, Sean, yeah. any point in your life, having a nightmare. <laughs> Sleeping next to your wife. Your wife cut her leg earlier in the day. Yeah. You have a nightmare. You ever woken up with your with your wife's like calf in your mouth, and you're you're just suckling on a, on the wound? Calf? No. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Whoa. <laughs> we're gonna shut. We're gonna shut uh, Sean's mic off now <laughs> before we learn too much. All right. Wah, wah. So so they get they get to the cave, and here's something I always find amazing, and I know it's movie magic. But I'm putting myself in like 1847, in the kind of situation where it takes three days to get somewhere. <laughs> How the fuck did they find that cave? <laughs> like, there are no road signs. There's, they barely have maps. Cave How, here. <laughs> I mean, does anybody, did anybody else at that point laugh when they when they go? That must be the cave. Yeah, because it's, it's like. Uh, yeah, no really? kidding. <laughs> I would picture they get take three days to get to the general area, and then like two more days to find the fucking cave. Yeah. <laughs> but they find the cave, yeah. uh, and then that's where you get the moment where, and this is a this is another good scene. <laughs> He's just outside doing these weird breathing things. Yeah. He's like kind of like threatening everybody, Toffler and everybody. He's digging. He's jumping up Tof- and down. He's Toffler's bouncing. freaking out. Toffler's freaking out. Yeah. Reich, yeah. the soldier, and uh, and Captain uh, Boyd into the cave with him. Yeah. And there's actually uh, I watched the, I watched the deleted scenes. <laughs> the person who lost the most in the deleted scenes in this movie was Neil McDonough. Yeah, there was some. There's a scene when they're yeah. trekking through the snow that he falls down the mountain, and uh, he doesn't get hurt. But they have to like they have to like form a human chain to get him back up again. Oh, uh, that's too bad. And there's a scene in this scene where originally Hart uh, is that that's Jeffrey Jones' character, right? Hart. Yeah, Hart. Uh, yeah. Hart says to Reich, "We're going to go inside," and and Reich says to me, he "Goes." He kind of like nicely says it to him. He says, uh, I don't need um, you to get in my way inside that cave, sir. I'll take Boyd because Boyd was more like physical. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, he wasn't a, a kind of a fat guy. Right. <laughs> so, but it's just a scene where he kind of, and he kind of puts it to him like, you know, I'll take him with me. He's, he's a little bit more adept at that kind of thing. I don't, and then he says, I don't need you getting in my way. Yeah. So they go into the cave. That's yeah. too bad. I, I I thought about that. I mean, how much did uh, some of these other guys lose in in cutting? The best part that Neil McDonough lost, and it actually would have they should have kept this thing because it would have added to why he has such distaste for um for uh fuck the names are all rolling together uh, for Toffler for Boyd oh for, for Boyd oh, for oh. for Guy Pierce's character yeah right? Boyd. Boyd he tells him that uh, the reason he's at Fort Spencer when they first meet is that he was court-martialed and kicked out of his unit because during a battle it was down to him and one other guy in his in his uh, infantry and the other guy said that he was going to stop fighting and leave and mcdonough says to him you know no reich says to him no we're going to fight this out and the guy left and he shot him in the back and killed him no he ends up winning the fight and then when they come back he admits to killing the guy they court martial him, and he basically says, "He goes, I can't stand fucking cowards." Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's why he has like this overall distaste yeah, of boy. Well, they kept that, making a point of his cowardice, right? Yeah, right. But that one little bit really drove it home. Yeah. So yeah, if you if you ever see the Blu-ray, oh, that's cool. And all the deleted scenes are literally yeah. they're unfinished yeah. and they're in one rung. There's a whole bit where when Boyd gets there, there's that scene where he kind of walks a little bit around, and it kind of is really quick. It's longer. He walks into the TP section where okay. the where the Native Americans are staying, and uh, he has, I think, a conversation with one of them, and then just kind of walks around a little bit more, and I think there's a little bit more David Arquette, too. Yeah. Oh, but it's yeah, like a 12-minute scene that's like, it's all one long chunk. We should probably mention that George is with the, this party at this point. So yeah, he's George probably the reason they found the cave. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah the, the, they do have the guide with them. Yeah. They do have George with them. So he, he might know the area a little bit more and all that. But. So they get into the cave, yeah. and Sean, what happens? Oh, we, you know, it. But we should mention, too, George is the one that warns the par- the group the whole, before they the leave. Wendigo. Of the Wendigo. George has the yeah. skin. He has, yeah. he has the Native American skin he, that he has heard, the story of Wendigo. Yeah, on, he right? heard Wendigo. Um, Wendigo. Uh, Calhoun. He heard Calhoun telling the tale of how they ate the others, right. and, and he right. comes in. And he's like, oh, oh, and he, he doesn't speak English apparently, so so it's all pantomime. But oh, and at one point he says, "Yeah, that you know, you're supposed to get stronger." Did you ever notice that? And he goes, "Yeah, that's possible. I might have noticed that." Yeah, he said, <laughs> I felt. <laughs> yeah. I felt a little bit I think more. I might have uh, felt that. What yeah. was the word? Uh, vi- uh, vi- uh, vibrant. Uh, vibrant. Viral. Viral. Yeah. There viral, might have yeah. been a certain yeah. virility. Yeah. 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 yeah, he's got. <laughs> <laughs> He's very good at doing he was creepy. So good. Yeah. <laughs> so they find the cave. Calhoun is shackled by that point, right? Yeah. Um, they tell Toffler <laughs> to keep an eye on him. Um, Riker and Boyd go into the. Yeah, first, they they yell into it, expecting to hear someone yelling back. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. 
They hear nothing. They're they're very hesitant. Um, uh, right, Riker, right, right, right. Reich and uh, Boyd go in to the cave to explore. Hart kind of stands at the mouth of the cave, <laughs> waiting, yeah. for, waiting for something to happen, and tells Toffler to keep an eye on on uh, Calhoun. There, Toffler is not up to the task. Yeah, he, no, can't, no. he can't do anything. <laughs> He's uh, <laughs> Calhoun's freaking him out by you. You know, the, all these weird moves and kind of trying to spook him. Yeah, he's just being weird. <laughs> His hands are going every so way. And then he'll dig and then he'll run back and then he'll go back and dig a little bit more. And, <laughs> and so eventually weird. pulls out. Well, first it coincides with right like realizing yeah. he finds the skeletons hanging up and he's like, well, obviously this guy ate him. And that yeah. scene. <laughs> it's a trap. I In all the, the viewings I've ever had of this movie, I did not remember that. I remember them finding bones. I didn't remember them finding them strung up. Strung up, like that. yeah, yeah. I was strung like, up, and then he finds the military uniform yeah. on the ground. Yeah, yep. and that's when he says it's Ives. Yeah. He now knows that this guy is really Colonel Ives, yeah. who was part of the party. He said, right. but we get, and that's one of the cool things it's about that is when you go back and you when you pay attention to that scene where he's telling the story about their travel, you never see him. Right, right. You see Ives at one point mm-hmm. in inside his in inside of his uh, wagon, and it's kind of like obscured. Yeah. But you realize I never saw that dude. Yeah. And it's because he's not who he says he is. Right. And uh, they went there because they thought there was one woman left. They find her. Yeah. Uh, she ain't in good shape. She's yeah. been uh, not really. Uh, she's been, uh, <laughs> he didn't eat her hair. <laughs> so at least there's that. <laughs> so you get the great scene now where Wright comes out and realizes it's a trap, and Jess is they're coming out of the because. They go into the cave into a hole. That's where they find everything. As soon as they're coming out, he uncovers a fucking giant Bowie knife, right? He pulls that thing out <laughs> and immediately dispatches Toffler. Well, uh, for heart first. Heart okay. first. Heart, yeah. okay. Yeah. Heart, yeah. He cuts, cuts heart's throat. He guts heart. Right. Guts him. Yeah. Yeah. He really guts him, too. Guts the shit out. Yeah. yeah. Oh, he rips him up. Right. right. He goes yeah. straight up. Right up through the sternum. Then he, yeah. uh, I think it was George, right? He, George he hit him in the back. Yeah. Yeah. George threw a, a tomahawk at uh, at Calhoun, Calhoun and, he, and hits, he turned and, and he hit Hart. Yeah, he turns yeah, Hart into yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> Double fucks Hart. Yeah. Uh, he kills he, he kills George with the knife. I think right. With a pistol. I think. Pistol. Shoots okay. Yep. Sh- yeah. Then he chases Toffler in the woods. He gives him a head start. Yep. Ends up killing him. <laughs> run. He goes run. <laughs> <laughs> Ends up killing him. He spooks him enough to dr- that Toffler drops his gun. Yeah, just, yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very similar character to his Private Ryan character. Yeah. He's just not built for warfare. <laughs> um, and then and then you get Boyd and you get Wright coming out of the cave and they take chase. Yeah. How does he kill Wright? Well, Wright goes over the cliff. Well, he, he hits him. He, he hits, hits him with him. a knife. Yeah, he right. Hits him with yeah. The knife there's a, there's a couple of scenes where they think they're going to catch up to him and and they. Don't. There's a couple of gunshots, but uh, when he when he gets Reich, I forget exactly what happened. But he, he throws, throws he the throws knife the knife. Him. Yeah, gets him in the chest. He falls off this off giant the, cliff. Yeah. yeah, you hear him screaming on the way. You hear him yeah. screaming on the way down. He's hitting every fucking branch on the yeah. way. <laughs> He's pulling a Rambo. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then you get this moment where and then there's a movie. <laughs> <here. laughs> <laughs> then it's just him and and Boyd. Him and Boyd and, and they're they're circling each other uh, near the edge of the cliff. And and this is a moment where Boyd's characteristics come into play Boyd again. Pulls a Rambo. He put well. I mean. And this scene I just thought was they like... They did that in the movie in 1980. <laughs> <laughs> did, he, did he think... Did Boyd think he was going to live? Do yeah, you think he had a better chance so. of living? I think I he was know. shooting for the trees. Do you think that's a did? good question. No, I don't that think was a he fucking... realized the branches would be there. Yeah. I think he was just... He's like, he's not going to kill me. I'm gonna... Right. I'm not sure. He, I don't he, know. Looked, he looked very hopeful. I guess that's a good debate. <laughs> so I'm not sure if he was hopeful yeah. because I'm going to die now or if he's hopeful that I'm going to live now. Well, he has, he has a choice of doing two things. He can go through Calhoun, try to fight him off, and obviously he realizes this guy is like fucking something's going on with this guy. Or he could jump off this giant cliff face. <laughs> and in a great scene, great, great stunt, he jumps off this giant cliff face. Yeah. He goes through all these branches. Then he lands on the fucking giant hill. <laughs> he rolls down the hill halfway. He ends up rolling over Reich's yeah, body. Yeah, yeah. Great, the, who, great scene. And right? Reich's, Reich's not dead yet. <laughs> right. They roll together. James roll. that knife in deeper. <laughs> the knife's going deeper. They both end up falling into like a fucking like a Ooh, pit. Yeah. Into it was, was that an oubliette? Yeah, it was an oubliette. Okay, they fall into an oubliette, as Lloyd would say. <laughs> Boyd hits the ground. It's your ex- most breaks the fuck out word. of his leg, right? Yeah. Like totally snaps Falling his leg through. Yeah. And this yeah. is a great moment. Reich is now hanging upside down, but still alive. <laughs> yeah. Boyd is like just trying to like you know like just okay. Um, that was like a like a wily coyote type fall. Which, by the way, I love 
when fucking Calhoun or Ives looks over the cliff, he goes. <laughs> he does that. <laughs> I thought that was a great touch. <laughs> and now Reich is hanging upside down, and he seems like he's dead. Blood everywhere, eyes open, fucking Bowie knife through the sternum. <laughs> And then he wakes up long enough to try to kill Boyd. Yeah. <laughs> He's yeah. trying to choke Boyd out. And uh, and he finally just dies. He expires. He expires. Yeah. So now you got this, like, you don't know how much time passes in this part. Yeah. You got you got Ives who is just having this grand time. He's like sitting in the on like a little island in a stream. Yeah, <laughs> he's just eating like someone's bones. <laughs> and then you got the I think oh, because while while the chase was going on, he kills Toffler. Off screen, okay. And that's when they find the body, right? And, he, and his yeah. guts are out yeah. and everything, and right? Right. They, oh yeah. yeah, he eviscerated the fuck out. Because then you see him later pulling uh, Toffler's body into the cave. Yep. <laughs> that's right. Yep. That's right. Which I thought and was like very, very easy for him to do because he's the smallest guy that they can drag <laughs> into the cave. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't Calhoun Calhoun go down and like walk around trying to look for uh, Boyd and he and does. Reich? He does, but he can't find him because they're in they're right, in the, they're, they're in covered the, up with all the branches. They're in the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> cover by branches. Um, so then you get this whole like little uh, bit of the scene where Boyd is essentially going to have to make a decision. Do I die here or do I do what now I, I'm pretty much realizing is real? <laughs> like that time that I swallowed all that blood and got super strength, <laughs> that wasn't a fucking joke. This guy's done it too. So long story short, he eats fucking right. Reich. Well, first he talks <laughs> he, to him. He's like, yeah, you're dead. Yeah, you don't yeah. need yeah. this yeah. anymore. He does, he does tell him. <laughs> he goes, I'm, I want your coat. Yeah. He, he pushes <laughs> his, coat. his bone back into his leg. Yeah. Pushes the bone back into his leg. He eats Reich and then walks the fuck home. Yeah. yeah. Um, he comes walking home and, and he gets home and now the reinforcements are there. The general is back. The uh, the, the uh, uh, Spencer character. John Spencer. John Spencer. Yeah. Um, and Martha and uh, Cleves are back and Knox is there. And uh, there's a new commanding officer coming in. <laughs> right. And this is where the movie really just takes like a weird turn. There's a couple of yeah. really weird turns. But... Right. We've already hit like one weird turn. <laughs> yeah. Where we went from Mexican-American war to like fucking this guy is a cannibal and he's going to kill everybody. Yeah. And now it gets weirder. Why does it yeah. get weirder? No, no one believes his story. Right. And so when uh, when the reinforcements come in, they introduce a new character. It's, it's Ives uh, Calhoun. He, but now he's not a backwards hillbilly. No, <laughs> he's all decked out in his uh, military yeah. gear, and he's in charge. Yeah, <laughs> nice mutton chops going. Yeah, yeah. very, all very cleaned up. Very Looking cleaned very up. cleaned up. Yeah. yeah, and 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 they did make a point earlier in the movie um, that during the whole you know that whole scene, um, Boyd shot him in the arm. So yep. uh, he tells uh, the the general the general character right. look at his shoulder. Look at his shoulder. Shows him the shoulder and the Wolverine effect. There is nothing there. <laughs> right. You know, and meanwhile, Boyd's leg has pretty much totally healed because uh, he supped on Reich. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> you know, I was waiting for a wink at that point. I really would have liked a wink from Carlisle. There was no wink, but what I liked right. was as soon as they got outside, he's just like, yep, yeah, <laughs> it's me. Yeah. Yeah, he, he does a hold back, yeah. I do yeah. remember the first time I see, saw it thinking, is he going to play along with he's not the same guy? Uh, nope. As soon as they're alone, he's like, yep, yeah. <laughs> I fucked you over. <laughs> I, I love that. Yeah. yeah. I, I love that he's just like, yeah, I am who I am. Fuck you. Yeah. <laughs> and then you learn you learn that his re- he really is Colonel Ives. Yeah. And he was a, he was a, he had tuberculosis and he was probably be, been decommissioned or he was sent off to a sanitarium uh he ends up his the rest of his story is true they got caught in terrible weather uh he ends up fucking eating uh, he, well his guide Yummy. right his guide tells him yeah. the wendigo myth much like yeah george told the yep. wendigo myth and he basically says fuck it i got nothing to lose let me give it a shot and he basically says you know i, I felt virile uh you know he he takes a deep breath and says i couldn't have done that like six months ago yeah. right you know, tuberculosis, I was just about dead. And then the whole rest of this movie ends up becoming this, like, little chess match between him and Boyd <laughs> yeah. about, like, and this is where the vampire thing really hits. Yeah. Is it like, are you going to join me? Yeah. You know, because yeah. that's what the va- vampire thing yeah, is. He just wants to recruit that. him. He yeah. just he wants to recruit him. him. He's like, I saw, I saw what you did to your buddy there in the right. hall. And uh, just accept yeah. your yeah. fate now. Yeah. yeah. And, and we, we are. And he doesn't, he doesn't want to rule the world. He wants to just be in Fort Spencer, yeah. and every few months when the when the prospectors come through, we'll we'll make a couple more come our way, and we'll eat some, and we'll do this. And at this point, we also learn that uh, it's kind of a surprise that uh, another character comes back. Oh yeah, uh, there's another twist. That another twist. Yeah, there's uh, so many twists. It's great. Yeah. Jeffrey Jones's character, Colonel Hart. Hart comes back. 
We saw Hart get fucking fucked well, up. Well, there is there is horses in a barn all strung up. Right. Which, I don't know how you kill that many horses and string them up without hearing all the screaming. Yeah. But anyway, well, it, it Cle- happened. Oh. Knox was drunk. Cleves was high. Martha doesn't give a fuck. And uh, <laughs> Boyd, nobody believes Boyd anyway. So, so yeah, he... He comes back and uh, he ends up. You find out that uh, at some point you don't know when. Maybe there's a deleted scene that I didn't see. Um, uh, uh, fucking Ives turned him. He must have come back and maybe fed him. Well, uh, some, well, yeah. probably back in the cave. I would back imagine. in the cave. I'm assuming. Yeah. You yeah. have to wonder because um, when you start thinking about it again, you go back to after the fall down the cliff, and after Ives Calhoun goes back to the cave and he's dragging. Davy, whatever, uh, Toffler's body into the cave. You don't see Hart laying right. out in front of the cave, right? right. And well, you also one, one he's too heavy to drag into the cave. Right. Itself. <laughs> you're not going to you're not going to get him down that hole. Yeah, but you also have to wonder. Pick, I mean, pick yourself up and crawl in. That's kind of something I mentioned before. You also have to wonder, and you don't really get a feeling for it. Is was I the only one that felt like that whole bit where Boyd was in the hole was maybe a couple days? Yeah, it like, felt it felt like a little it, while yeah. when he's yeah. with with the body. When he's with right, yeah, it yeah. definitely felt like it's more than more than a few days. Right, yeah, it felt like they were trying to show time passing, but they didn't do it like in a. It might not have been the best way. Yeah, you know, because you see like yeah. you see I, uh, Ives or Calhoun, you know, like he's he's sitting, you know, eating someone, and mm. and then he's like just walking around. Well, and, you you would think it would have to be a few days. I mean, just between what they they would say about uh going to get supplies right when because there's a there's a point where uh cleves i guess is coming back at one point before he's going back out and they they said he goes back out for days to get supplies three days they yeah. said yeah it's so, a three-day run so it's a three-day run out no women yeah <laughs> no women. and then martha no says women. no women no, no, no women yeah, <laughs> yeah no, no no local weed, weed. <laughs> no local weed no yeah. local weed and no, no women cleaves <laughs> no rum no. <laughs> so everything but so there's at least three days there and then who knows how long after that with um the general coming up right so i mean i would assume it would be weeks before you, you would, start eating the person next to you but it didn't seem like that yeah at all. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah i'd give it probably three days to a week Three days to a week before yeah. you would start eating the person next to you. <laughs> no, no, no. I'd start right away. Oh, you would start right yeah. away. I'd eat right. any one of you guys. Okay. All right. <laughs> Just <laughs> feeling a bit peckish, are you? <laughs> Just wanted to make sure. <laughs> Just want to know where we're at. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so th- th- at this point, we're how like, long is it? We're we're we're, com- we're coming into kind of like how the how the movie just kind of like comes together is you you get this whole bit where, and I thought this was great too, where, <laughs> and they're having this whole chess match about like how they're going to go about you know the future. Boyd doesn't want anything to do with this. He's already fucking distraught enough that he's done this stuff, but he also realizes that like it's the only way he's going to win is by doing this. Well, and- I like how uh, it, during all this bit too you've got the the hale and hardy looking ives and the very weak and pale looking right uh what the hell's his name boyd boyd, boyd. he's clammy as fuck yeah yeah, yeah. clammy yeah. as fuck good yeah. looking guy they made him clammy as fuck in this movie yeah <laughs> you know and they do they make it a point like 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 uh um heart and ives heart particularly they well, made it a point to show how much better he looked after he became a cannibal. Yeah, right, mm-hmm. after he shows up. He's too. like, he's kind of like messy, and, and they make the point that he has to fucking break the walnuts with the book. Yeah. And then he now breaks he, the walnuts with his, his hand. hand. Yeah. His hair is a little bit better. He's not wearing glasses. Yeah. Uh, so, like, yep. you figure his eyesight has been healed. Yeah. And, um, and then, yeah, you got Guy Pierce who's just like, fucking, like, he just looks, I wouldn't want to touch him. <laughs> well, I, I love when, when Ives walks into the room and he just collapses on the floor. Yeah. He's so yeah. freaked out. <laughs> Everyone's looking at him like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> so, I want to talk about, I want to talk about the stew. <laughs> I want to talk All about right. to, to, the, to the major Knox stew. Right. So, he ends up. Uh, so, it's just no- Knox is still around at this time. Knox is still around. Knox is still around. And, uh, well, Ives <laughs> just. I've they just, locked up um, Boyd in the room, and I the, think is that when they shut the door. Yeah, they shut the door on him. They lock him up because he tries to kill Ives. Yeah, <laughs> what parts does he try to kill Ives? Doesn't he try and kill him? Because he, he leaped Not at him yet. at some point. I don't remember. No, was, I, I think they just say we're going to lock you up until you decide you're going to do this, right? Because he was yeah. being loud and annoying, right? Basically, All right? And they just say you know until you decide we're going to put we're going to put you away for a while. I think that's right. what happened. So anyway, so he, yeah, he's yeah, making man. stew. <laughs> Ives is making stew. This still looked pretty fucking good. Look pretty wait, good. But wait, then Knox's uh, Knox, swords disappear. Yeah. Right, yeah. right, right, right. <laughs> and Knox asks him, "Hey, can I can I help you with the stew?" Yeah. And he says, "No, maybe you can contribute later." Yeah, you, <laughs> you can contribute, contribute later. Later. Where, now, you know, this is funny because like I, I just I'm having uh, sudden uh, memory loss. 
Where does Knox get killed? In the room it, there. It's like off. The, it's, right when the door closes. Yeah. Right? Okay. So they kill him there's, for there's the a, stew. Well, I think that's when Hart comes back. Hart comes back before right, right after he gets killed. Yeah. Oh, okay. You so the, hear him yeah. get killed and then Hart. Yeah. Comes yeah. Back. There's there's oh, a point okay. where that's... where you've got Boyd in the room and he's and he's calling out through the room and he's trying to get everybody's attention and and Knox is walking around the room after he says uh, you know one of my swords is missing. There's a camera angle from Boyd's angle looking. Mm-hmm. Into the other room, and you see someone walk by with the sword in his hand. And he, it. doesn't he say, Major Knox, I just want to hear that you're still there. Right, right. right, right okay, yeah. all right. I don't know why I lost that. Yeah. And also, Cleves, he killed Cleves when he kills all the horses. Yeah. Because yeah. he, he has him up on the, there's a scene where he's right. up on the roof bleeding onto yeah. Martha's right. face. That's a, that, it was right. Hart who killed Cleves. And Hart kills yeah. Cleves. Hart, Hart and does and all, the, the, all the horse killing and everything off screen. So, so I want to talk about this stew, though. Because because uh, I'm a food guy. <laughs> First of all, I want to say that for for a cannibal stew, this looked delicious. It yeah. <laughs> looked good. Second thing I want to say about this stew is that in like 1847, compared to today's stew, like when I have stew, my wife makes stew, or you know, I go anywhere I have stew. You know, it's like you get little cubes of potato. Did you notice it was just whole, whole fucking potatoes? potatoes? Oh yeah, like in the bowl there was yeah. like whole potatoes. The onions were literally just cut in half. Chopping yeah. onions in half. Just cut the onion in half, put it's it in the fucking thing. Big giant cauldron. Big giant cauldron. I I, I watch yeah. this movie every time and I go, I want to fucking try this stew. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not with the general or the the major Knox <laughs> have a little uh, Knox part. stew. Yeah. So you, they make the stew it's and perfectly marinated. They have bourbon. this. <laughs> they have this this wonderful <laughs> this wonderful scene where uh, where um, uh, Boyd. It's a dinner scene. It's uh it's it's Ives, Hart, hardly eating the stew, and they're trying to force Boyd to eat it. And they're saying, you know, this is the easiest way for you to do it. It's been, you know, cooked deliciously. He won't do it. He finally ends up doing it because he realizes that he's he's dying. He's going right. to, you know, and he has to gain his strength. He's like, you're either going to die or you're going to eat. So I was reading the trivia on this. Guy Pierce is a fucking devout vegetarian. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> they said that every take they did, he would chew this, chew this, chew this, and then have to fucking spit it out, oh, wash sure. his mouth out. And then they said they couldn't get it in one day, <laughs> which to me sounds like bullshit. I think they were just fucking with him. Yeah, totally. Because, like, how hard is an eating take? <laughs> yeah. Take a couple bites, guy. But apparently they were just going cut, didn't work. <laughs> and he's in there brushing his teeth and going back, flossing. <laughs> so we basically get to the end of the movie here where he ends up talking heart into... Heart doesn't have his heart in this, really. Right. right? He ends up... Carlisle is out... Or Calhoun. Calhoun is outside somewhere. Yeah, he's outside. And it's just uh, Boyd and Hart. Boyd and Hart. And like you said, Hart just realizes, I, I just don't I don't have it in me to, to do this. Right. I want you to kill me. Kill me. You know, make it quick. Kill me. So that's exactly what happens. So he does. He kills him, and now it's down to Boyd and Ives... The, the 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 two guys that we yep. knew were gonna eventually either that's when you get the superhero fight we do get a superhero yeah. fight <laughs> yeah. and this fight again reading the trivia about this the original idea for this fight was they were gonna have it take place at night and they were gonna end up fighting on top of the roof of the uh, of the fort mm-hmm. and the fort was gonna be on, it was gonna be this huge set piece where they fight on top of the roof the fort's on fire while they're fighting and <laughs> okay. they said literally towards the like last couple days of filming. Um, well, these sequences, they just said, you know what would make more sense? That these two fucking just beat the fuck out of each yeah, other. Yeah, and that was great. <laughs> and that was yeah, great, because this was. fight is, like, brutal. It's they're brutal. They're stabbing each yeah. other. They're freak- So they end up outside. They end up just, like, so Ive says to him, you know, manifest destiny. More people are coming west. You're going to do this with me. And Ives eats the General Knox stew. Yeah. He gets his fucking strength. Uh, I'm sorry, What was boy. that talk they had? We said, uh, it's, you know, it's... It's not easy being a cannibal. You don't, yeah, make, a you don't, make, a you don't make a lot of friends. Yeah. 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 So we want a family. We don't want to eat everyone. We want a family, but not too many. Yeah, you know, we have yeah. too many mouths to feed. And that's that's where I was really yeah. getting that whole vampire vibe, yeah. where it's like, well, we don't want to do it alone. Right. We're gonna right. Make, we're gonna make a small group of us, and we're gonna be a community. Right. So. Okay. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> we're gonna yeah we're gonna we're gonna do this together. Yeah. <laughs> so they have a fight, Sean. Do you like the fight scene? I did. I thought it was uh, it was uh, it was brutal, and it was up there with uh, you know Roddy Piper and uh, <laughs> Keith David, and they live. Yeah. <laughs> I just love the weird touch that uh, that Carlisle's character has the blood cross on his yeah, head. Yeah, yeah, that, that was cool. cool. Just added yeah. like a little. Like you're a horror movie guy. You write for horror yeah. uh, horrornewsnetwork dot net. Yeah. Do, do you consider would would you consider this a horror movie? Yeah, it's a tough call. Yeah, because it has the gore. Well, that's the thing. It could have been so much gory than it was. It had gore, but it wasn't over the top. So I I don't know. I guess it, Cannibal movie automatically has to be considered horror it's weird though isn't I guess. it because it, 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 it yeah. kind of fits into the genre but it doesn't it, yeah, it straddles it, so many 
things, it's it's hard to to really nail down. It's one of the things I like. That's what makes it yeah. so good. hard to yeah. market too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, yeah. I'm definitely when we put this episode out, I'm definitely putting the trailer up on our social media and just seeing if people can figure out what the fuck's going on here. So this has a pretty big cult following now, right? Oh yeah. Does uh, it? Does it really? Well, I, I say oh yeah, and meaning that people know what this movie is in mm-hmm. terms of like I think. You know, I th- I don't know. I'd like to think so. I championed the fuck out of this movie. I always have. Obviously, yeah. I did it with you. I told you. You did with yeah. me. I'm like, you have to watch I it. I liked it more. I liked it the first time. Yeah. And I watched it again, and I liked it more this time. I watch so. this every couple of years. I watch, This I, I, is really moving up in my uh, top movies. Yeah. It's, it's one of those movies, that, like, if you saw it on TV, I would sit down and watch it until the end. It's, right. It's just one of those things that I like to see all the time. And I, you know what else I it like does? I like everything about it. You know what else it does very right? Even, even Jeffrey Jones. Yeah. <laughs> Charges be damned. Yeah I, yeah. I have a real difficult time with him. It's just, I, I agree. Because he's so good. I and agree. And you're like, mm-hmm. man, you're such a dirty fucker. Yeah. <laughs> if you're wondering what we're talking about, I, 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 alluded it to, I, I alluded to it earlier, but Jeffrey Jones has been uh, caught multiple times. Multiple times. Uh, with uh, with uh, yeah, kitty porn. He's a yeah. registered sex offender. Yeah. Yeah. So and next he, time you see Ferris Bueller and you're like, oh, Ed Rooney. Yeah, Ed Rooney's a fucking slob. The, the first <laughs> time it happened, I figured he'd never get a, get work again. And he was one of those guys, too, that I think his whole thing was like he, he sent his computer for someone to like clean it or something. Like you know, like, like it, it was, or yeah. to be fixed, mm-hmm. and like they found that shit, and they they they, they did what they should have done. Yeah. But it happened, I think, twice. Yeah, because at one point, it's like him and Stephen Collins must be like rooming together or something. Yeah, because <laughs> at one point, and I don't I don't want to talk out of turn, but at one point, wasn't he involved in something that happened with Paul Rubens? But I think Paul Rubens was like I think taken out of it. Yeah, because they could. I, I don't know. From what I remember. Pee Wee had paintings or something of boys on his what, but they didn't consider that art, right? Mm. But he, he was lumped in with Jeffrey Jones, he got lumped in with yeah, because it happened right around the same time as Jeffrey Jones, yeah. I think. Is that when he was jerking off in the theater? No, this was like, <laughs> like, this was like 15 years ago. It was much, it was he'd already uh, the jerk off thing ended, he'd already come back and made his okay. like name again, and then he got in, there was it, and it went away like a wet fart with him, huh? Yeah. Like, I didn't hear anything, because like, it. yeah, I, I remember hearing uh, Pee Wee was in trouble. Yeah. And then just never hearing again, and he's Pee-wee's still in trouble. <laughs> 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 well, compared to this guy, I shouldn't be locked up. Yeah, really. <laughs> like, I, 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 good point. Well, you yeah. know, he probably thinks like, you know, it's worse than me, right? <laughs> you know, who Jeffrey Jones is. You know, who Jeffrey Jones is. <laughs> oh boy, he's oh, much worse. Huh? <laughs> oh god, paging Mister Herman, <laughs> Mister P W Herman. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we get to, we get to the very end, and uh, and these two guys they they come head to head, they have a giant fight, and uh, it comes down to uh, I guess the question, uh, Lloyd, I'm going to ask you, and I'm also going to ask Sean because maybe Sean has different life experience. Have you do you are bear traps that big? Are there bear I've traps? I've never that seen big? one that big. No. I've never seen one in person that I can remember, but. Uh, no, that thing was freaking huge. But apparently, out there, who knows? They got big bears. Big I bear. looked up. Yeah. I, the next day, because I've seen this movie, you know, I think a bear five trap times. Is big enough to just get the leg. The yeah. yeah. So the next not day the after bear. after watching this this time, well, that would I looked it up. What you want? Is yeah. The whole bear. I could not <laughs> find giant bear traps anywhere. So the end of this fight ends up with. So you went looking for giant bear traps because honestly, every time I see this movie, I always think to myself, well, well at least that's coming up in your search function. Yeah. When, when yeah, we yeah, say yeah. giant bear trap, <laughs> yeah, like this bear Jones. trap had to be about a uh, five foot diameter. Yeah. Yeah. It was, oh, it was oh, easily. It was human yeah. sized. Yeah. It wasn't well, like it you fit two of them. Right. <laughs> you usually step into a bear trap. This right. was a bear trap that. So so basically, you uh, sit in it. So Guy Pierce's character had rigged this bear trap earlier. I think he knew he wasn't going to get out of this fight alive. And they, I think he I, wanted to end it. He I didn't wanted to want it. to be alive. Right. At the end. Yeah. I thought that was kind of the point when he had a discussion with Martha at one point, where yeah. she's like, "Well, you, you have to die." Right. Right, right. That's there's the sacrifice to, to kill the Wendigo. You have, to you have yeah. to right, die. and he's and yeah, he's got to end the line, and yeah. he's he doesn't want to live anymore because of the stuff he's done. Yeah. You know, you ate a dude. <laughs> it's like <laughs> fuck. Now he's eating two. <laughs> he's eating several dudes. I mean, one of them was a delicious three. stew, but he ate, <laughs> he ate a dude. <laughs> um, one, one of them was bourbon. <laughs> the bourbon, <laughs> bourbon, <soaked. laughs> bourbon stew. So they end up they end up <laughs> drifting this fight into this bear trap. He tricks them into the bear trap. The bear trap uh, <laughs> it, uh, takes them both out. They fall down. Um, and then uh, they have a conversation. And they have this <laughs> right face to face, laying on top of each other. One of my favorite scenes in the movie, though, yeah. is like. Uh, so, what do they end up saying to each oh, other? Oh, you tricky bastard! <laughs> Whoever dies first, the other one. The question is, yeah. yeah, will you eat them? Yeah, and 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 uh, and Calhoun Ives says, "I know if you go first, I'm gonna eat you." Yeah. 
And and because there's no sexual connotation. Oh, at yeah. all. <laughs> Again, I'm gonna eat you. The vampire, the the whole vampire idea. Any idea where you're Manster, consuming someone else? Oh, I'm gonna eat you. <laughs> I, did, I didn't really get a sexual thing out of that. I don't. I don't I really. Th- didn't. I don't think it's supposed to be overtly no. sexual. I think anything that because they're to not do... lying on top of each other or anything. Right. Well, they are, but... <laughs> I, I agree with him. I agree with him that it didn't feel overtly sexual to right. me either. Exactly. But I think anytime you get into the idea of vampirism <laughs> or cannibalism, consuming somebody else, there's like some... There's like those... There's a layer. Mm-hmm. You peel the onion back a little bit and you're like, there's oh, look, lot. look, sex. <laughs> anytime you're in the middle of the woods and going... Ah, ah, yeah. <laughs> and licking people. <laughs> so they end up they end up uh, in this fight. <laughs> they both die. Uh, Rob, Robert uh, Carlyle's character dies first. Yep. So you're wondering, okay, is he going to continue? He does not. What was his last word? Bon appetit. Bon appetit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then and then uh, and then Boyd Boyd expires on top of him. And then what? Mm. Maybe my favorite moment in the whole movie. So then you get the part where the general comes in. Yeah, that was a good moment. And yeah. basically starts it all over again because he tastes the stew. Right. Yeah. So general. So, yeah, general walks in. He general sees walks the stew, in. He, he sees starts it. sniffing it like, oh, that looks good. And, it, and, ah. and Martha is leaving the building. Right. right. <laughs> That's it right there. My favorite scene in the movie is the very last scene where the general's there and uh, and then Martha's just like fuck this <laughs> she's like these white people are fucking crazy <laughs> she leaves and then you get back to fucking credits and, uh, and, the, and the great uh, the great score yeah, yeah again uh, Damon uh, Albarn and, uh, and uh, Michael yeah. Nyman so so there it is Ravenous 1999 something we didn't bring up earlier I wanted to bring up real quick uh, is that this movie had a really rough start yeah, uh, yeah. The, I, uh, Antonio Bird was not the first. He was director? not the first director. Right. The first director was, it was a guy. Carlisle brought her in. Huh? Carlisle. I think Carlisle brought her. Carlisle oh, did yeah. bring her in. Yeah. The first director was a guy named uh, Milo uh, Merchensky, and after three weeks of having all these issues with the studio, Fox Two Thousand, they said they kept on like his dailies. They kept on uh, giving him shit about how much dirt was on the costumes and. They didn't understand what was going on in the in, in the <laughs> right. in the scenes in the script, which again we talked about. Clean costumes. After three weeks, one of the studio heads came from like L.A. to Slovakia, hmm. along with uh, 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 the guy's name was uh, <laughs> the, the credit that I find for him is funny, uh, Raja Gosnell, who ended up directing uh, one of the Scooby Doo movies with like Matthew <laughs> Lillard. They brought him over. Wow. As a threat to say <laughs> he's going to take over if you can't do it. They gave him a couple more days. They fired him, but then the cast didn't want to work with that director. Yeah. So they had to shut the movie down for two weeks while they looked for a new director. Robert Carlyle apparently produced and was in a couple movies that Antonia Bird had done. They were like partners. Hmm. He told her about it, and she said, you know, I'll come over. They had another 10 days of negotiating. She got the job. She came over, and as soon as she started, she immediately said that the first director wasn't wrong. The, the studio was fucking everything up. Huh. So she agreed with the first director and said, mm. like, you're sticking your nose in, and they let her do her thing. Unfortunately, huh. the movie didn't end up making any money. Yeah. So uh, Yeah, but she made a great movie. She made a great movie. Yeah. So, yeah, r- real quick, uh, yeah, filmed in um, the Tassara Mountains in Slovakia, those uh, subbed for the Sierra Nevadas. <laughs> uh, the war scenes were actually filmed in Durango, Mexico. So they filmed the oh, Mexican-American okay. war scenes in Mexico. And uh, the studio, any of the studio stuff, probably inside the fort and uh, all that stuff, uh, Prague, Czech Republic. So yeah, this was, was a, dirt cheap to, to film there. At least it was. I don't think it is now. Yeah. It, it really used to be. It, that's where all the Transfers movies were done. <laughs> <laughs> I love Transfers. Doll Man and that kind of stuff. The Return to Jack Death. <laughs> What are we going to do? Let's do some box office. You want some box office? Let's do some All box right. office. <laughs> oh, <God. So>, uh, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, this so, was not a great weekend for Phil. I bet you it was a worse yeah. weekend for Ravenous. Uh, uh, Sean, yeah. well, before we start, Sean, yeah. top, we're going to do the top ten. Yep. We did this with you on your episode two. You think Ravenous is going to be in the top ten for the weekend? For its opening weekend? Yeah. No way. Okay. It opened in <laughs> 1,040 cinemas. Okay. It opened in over a thousand yes. mo- uh, cinemas. That's pretty yeah. impressive for this movie. Yeah. Yeah. And I it, bet you by the second week it was playing in four hundred and twelve. I bet you by the second <laughs> week it was in less than that. <laughs> and it actually made uh, over a million the first weekend. One wow. point. Really. One point oh four million. And I'm wow. sure wow. the studio heads were like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it finished in number eighteen. Yeah. Oh. Number eighteen for that week. Um, so Ooh. here's the order uh, from one to ten. Shit. Do you want to know? All the info. You want a magnifying glass? Yeah, I you do. Good? This is pretty small. <laughs> uh, number one, Forces of Nature. 
What? Ben I don't Affleck, even know what right? the hell that is. Ben yeah. Affleck, Sandra Affleck. Bullock. Yeah. That was uh, never saw oh, it. I was Nature there. was the fucking bomb, you know. <laughs> <laughs> James Phantom. Phantom. Wasn't that Phantom? Phantom? But he, he they mentioned for, oh, sometimes you make forces of nature. That's right. Oh. <laughs> Matt Damon gives him shit. I only vaguely <laughs> remember that. Wow. No, I don't remember it. One week. Uh, number two, analyze this. Oh, oh three weeks. The first one was good. The second one was not. Yeah. Uh, number three, <laughs> true crime. That was one week. Clint Eastwood. Yeah. Number. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Number four, baby geniuses. Oh no! Yikes. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Two weeks. <laughs> wow. Uh, number five, cruel intentions. Really? Never saw that. But that's a. Yeah. Uh, that was alright. Sarah Michelle Geller, yeah. Ryan Filippi. Yeah. Three weeks for that. Uh, number <laughs> six, The King and I. Okay. One week. Number was that the animated one, or was that the? Uh, it action? says Warner Brothers. I'm not sure. Animated, probably. Uh, it could be. Uh, number seven, The Rage, Carrie Two. Oof, oh my god! So bad. Wow, so bad. Yeah, two <laughs> weeks. <laughs> that made more than ravenous. Yeah, it made three point seven that weekend. Made wow. more in its second week. Four times more. <laughs> yeah. In its second week, oh, yeah, people yeah. were going out to see The Rage, Carrie Two. <laughs> What do you want to do tonight? <laughs> you know, we didn't see the Rage Carry 2 last week. You want to go tonight? <laughs> Fuck yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, man. <laughs> All right, number eight, The Corruptor. Two weeks. Chow Yun Fat. Yeah. Okay. Was that? I think that was Mark Wahlberg, right? Was that like an early Mark Wahlberg Marky movie? Mark Wahlberg. Oh, was yeah. it? Yeah. Number nine, no, I actually saw this movie. <laughs> Shakespeare in Love. 15 weeks. Never saw that. One best picture that year. Yeah. 2.9 that weekend. <laughs> Still made more and than yeah. Ravenous made total. Number 10, The Deep End of the Ocean. <laughs> the Deep End of the Ocean. That Two weeks. Is... I don't even know that. No clue. Oh. No clue. Yeah. So I that, that's name. your opening weekend. Huh. Well, again, this is f- March, right? March 19, yeah. Er, early January yeah, to weird. early March is yeah. like the graveyard for yeah. movies. Obviously, that proves it because there's nothing on there that I would have. I don't think there's anything on there I would go see in the theaters. It's probably why they right. released this. Yeah. They, they figured, well, there's <coughs> nothing else coming out. You know, the rage carry too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think the best demographic for us to put this movie out is on the second weekend of the Rage Carry too. There's no way they're going to hold that horror audience. Yeah. But but remember, Bill, nobody knows what the fuck our movie's about. <laughs> Demographics are coming back. Some people think that it's a fucking it's a Civil War movie. Some, some people, th- but, it's, but it's Guy Pierce. It's Guy Pierce. <laughs> He's going to be a fucking superstar pretty soon. Oh, man. Not because of this. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. No, no, no. no. <laughs> I, I will say right. this. At one point, I was I was looking this up while you guys were talking. And if if you are a sufferer of uh, misophonia, the, uh, the sound that irritates you, this movie will probably piss you off from the very, very first scene to the end of the movie. Wait, you're talking about the score? No. Oh. No, I mean the sound effects, like the dinner scene. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. All, all the scraping uh, on all plates stuff, and everything. Yeah. All that stuff. Uh, you know, it, just the, the weird things that happen in this thing. It's just nuts. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, what all the right. fuck is happening? So let's move on to ratings. I'm going to save you till last. All right. Slurping the, the stew. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, I, I, every I time they're eating, it's just like it drives me nuts myself. So, And I don't even have that. Sean, what do you give this? So is it one to five? One to five. One to five, yeah. Five being the best? Five being the best, zero right. being five a possibility. <laughs> zero is on the table. Five no, bloody steaks. It was. And, 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 uh, <laughs> and we, do, uh, we do quarter scale, so however you want to go okay. between one to five. I'm going to go I'm gonna go three and a half. All right. I, I did enjoy half. this movie. Ah, see, I'm excited. I, and, I wanted to wait till the end. I, I got the feeling you seemed like you enjoyed it a bit, but I... Joining us on this, and this movie is, I guess it could, this movie could go both. I know if I watched this with my wife, she'd go, what the fuck did you make me watch? <laughs> you know? Yeah. And, and There's no love story. I <laughs> And my wife liked it too, so, I mean, that plays into it, I guess. But That's yeah, awesome. Three, three and a half, and like I said, it was not marketed correctly when it yeah. came out. No. Like, do you remember yeah. the TV spots? And I'm like, I don't know what the hell this movie, it's a schizo movie. <laughs> I, I, I have no idea what this is supposed to be. I'd like to see the trailer. I don't I don't remember the trailer. Well, watch it on YouTube. Yeah, it, yeah, it, it's fucking, it is. It looked like an action pick at, at, at some time, yeah. at some point. And if I'm correct, if I remember, because like I said, I watched it like a week ago. I think it's, uh, what was the guy's name? The the trailer guy, Don. Um, I think it's him. Oh, oh. You know, I think like, he's uh, Captain John Boyd. Yeah. You know, it's like, it's like yeah. this doesn't fit this movie at all. Um, yeah. In a world. The, yeah, 1947. <laughs> and he he was licking me line was was featured prominently. Oh yeah, yeah. And I'm like, is that supposed to be funny or scary? I don't get it. <laughs> yeah, it was hard to say in that trailer. Yeah, yeah. it's it's just kind of weird. Mm. Weird movie. It love is a very it. weird movie. <laughs> All right, it. Sir John, what do you give this? Uh, it's one of my favorites. 
And in, and in repeated viewings, it just gets better. It does. So I'm giving it a solid four. Nice, nice. I love I love when John like gets that. a solid. That's a, that, I believe that's your highest score. So far. So far. Yeah, it is. Because yeah. yeah. fucking adaptation you will always be there to ruin everything. <laughs> um, for me, there's, there's really nothing about this movie that didn't work for me. So I'm giving it a four. It could have been a four and a half with more Neil McDonough. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, like I said, there, it's, it's not on the cutting room floor. So it, right. it is a problem with me in this movie is that most of the main cast is literally axed um, halfway through. Yeah, yeah, right. So it's it it's a little depressing. But then some come back. So some do. Yeah, yeah. and and a big surprise. Yeah. I didn't see that happen. Yeah. I remember the first time I watched it, I was like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, you brought this movie. All right, so I love this movie. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I've loved it for 20 years. Yeah. Uh, I brought it to the Invitational, so it means I must care about it. Five is tough for me because five, there's certain movies that are five. Yeah. Uh, I can't throw this in a five. I will give this a solid four and a half, though. Nice. I'll give this a solid four and a half. I, I, I it just, you know what it is? I, I, this is one of those few movies that I feel like is my movie. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Mm-hmm. Because again, more often than not, when I run into people, like, you know, Sean, Sean writes for, a movie uh, site. Now it's a horror site, but you're also a movie guy. And when I asked you about this, you didn't know what this really was. You know what I mean? Like it was, <laughs> yeah. it was kind of like, yeah, I think I've heard of it, but, and that's how most people's response to it is. It's, you it's know? one of those that you've either seen it, heard of it, right. Or have not heard of it. This will be so, one of the right. lower downloaded episodes <laughs> of the invitational probably Maybe. because when, too people, bad. when people look and see what movie it is, they're going to go, oh, what the fuck is that? Yeah. Well, and and learn. I get that, <laughs> but but that's why I say, and we'll put, we'll make sure to put some word out there is, you know, you don't always want to sleep on those movies because some of them are really good. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I love Ravenous. Yeah. Uh, great score. And I think I mentioned this earlier and I, or I was about to say it, maybe I didn't say it, but I'll repeat it if I did. It also is a is a great example of a movie that knows when to get out. It's not super long. No, right? like no, it it's is not. hour and forty minutes. It's super really? tight. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah well, it's super right. tight because mm-hmm. once you know you get that opening salvo of a scene where you find out like what happened with Boyd. He gets introduced to the camp, meets everybody, and then shit happens right away. Yeah, and it just yeah, it moves. Is... It like literally once you get back from uh, from the scene where he's stuck in the oubliette with uh, <laughs> with with Reich. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a there's, whole there's different. Like, a half hour left at that point. Yeah. And it's like and it's everything, quick. it's quick, and everything yeah. just kind of hits right there. Yeah. Yep. yeah. So I love this movie. I suggest this to anybody. Um, I, that's my challenge. After you listen to, if you listen to this episode and you don't watch this movie, shame on you. Oh, you should go watch it. And I'll also mention that you should go and check out uh, Everybody Wants Some too, <laughs> since we right. talked about that, because I think that's another good one. <laughs> I, I like the, there was, I think, one of the earliest uh, radio show episodes we did, and you played the soundtrack or the, the, the main score. Yeah. Uh, one night at the end, and I'm like, what is that? I know that. And yeah. Like, oh, it's the Ravenous score. I'm like, oh, motherfucker, that's awesome. Yeah. Even the co- <laughs> even the cover to the soundtrack, it's just like it's like a, I think it's one of the posters too. It's just like a close up of a mouth and it's black and it's like looks like it's open like screaming is better than the fucking the Blu-ray. <laughs> the Blu-ray is so chintzy. Yeah. It, the, the 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 movie's great. The features are good. Uh, actually, it's kind of funny. So you, there's the um, the deleted scenes on it, and then there's like a 25 minute interview with Jeffrey Jones. <laughs> <laughs> I watched like the first five minutes, and I was like, I don't want to watch this fucking guy, <laughs> pervert. I, I just want to like use that that poor explanation like some night. Like, why why was your mouth on my thigh? Yeah, <laughs> I, I just I, I don't know what it was. I, I just have a nightmare. I just having a I nightmare. Had a nightmare and, <laughs> Sucking on your leg. It's just. I woke up and his wound just, was in my mouth. <laughs> get, get those hand, get those handcuffs out. Yeah, really. Oh, I, I need them. Feel free to, you must restrain me. Feel free to manage yeah. me. All right, so let's do some uh, shout outs here, real quick, Sean. Thank you for joining us on this one, and uh, and we'll we'll get you going on your second invitational. Yes. So start thinking about what movie. Yes. Uh, you want to do, and we will have you back for that very uh, very shortly. <laughs> Um, give everybody out there uh, your website. Give everybody uh, where they can find your writings. So Horror News Network, it's uh, horrornewsnetwork.net. And you uh, cover all different kinds of stuff, right? Y- yeah. Yeah, we do reviews. We do news mostly, but we, you know, reviews, interviews, everything. Of course, Connecticut Horror Fest as well. Hit us up. And uh, at the time this is coming out, pretty soon, pretty soon in February, February 15th, ConnecticutCultClassics.com. Yes. Uh, it is, what is it called? Undead Date Night? Yes. I think it's, it's Undead uh, Date Night. The, the Big Valentine's. Big yeah. Valentine's, February yeah. day, 15th. Day after Valentine's Day. It is uh, Reanimator. 
Yeah. Oh, and <laughs> Night of the Creeps. Yes. Oh, God. Right? So that's a good, yeah. that's a, and, yeah. and I know Larry is always trying hard to, uh, like, I, I think Larry ha- gives himself a hard time sometimes because he feels like they're not culty enough. Yeah. These are two pretty cult classics. Yeah, yeah. favorite with, of mine. With one of the best taglines ever, Night of the Creeps. The good news, your dates are here. Bad <laughs> news, they're dead. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, I just saw that movie for the first time ever, like maybe two months ago. And uh, it's one of those ones that, like, you know, I've heard people say it is. It's a super fun movie. It is. It's, yeah. uh, it, it's Tom a, Atkins. Tom Atkins. Jason Lively. Yeah, the kid from European Vacation. Yeah, Jason Lively. As soon yeah. as he came out, I'm like, I know this kid. This is, uh, he's going to porker. Daddy's going to porker. He's not going to porker. <laughs> That's okay. He's not going to porker, Russ. Oh, he may porker. Oh, he's going to porker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you got to check us out at www.pineacomics.com. Go to uh, your favorite podcatching app. Go to iHeartRadio. Go to Spotify. Uh, any of those places. Uh, Apple podcast i guess it's called now I, I don't think itunes exists anymore i don't know what the fuck's going on with that <laughs> yeah. uh check out Piney comics sure. we put out new episodes every single week and then on sunday nights john where can they find us on sunday nights on the radio show oh it's this place called wesu you can find us at wesufm.org and go to the archives if you're not going to listen while we're live yep, you have 14 sunday days night. to listen to every show yeah 6 30 p.m to 7 30 p.m on the eastern uh, mountain time would be, I don't know, an hour behind that. I don't fucking know mountain, mountain time. time. I don't get it. About mountain time. GMT. Mountain. <laughs> and, uh, and if you want to check us out on the socials, uh, just go to Facebook and type in Pino Comics. Uh, YouTube. Go to our YouTube channel and uh, subscribe and ring that bell. And uh, Pint, uh, at Pino Comics uh, on uh, Twiddler. So, yeah. Mm. yeah. I'm looking at MeWe. What's MeWe? It's another social network. Okay. MeWe. What's Venmo? That's another social thing that's pay it's like a kind paypal of. it's a money yeah. i think right it's okay. like, there is mm, but yeah it's yeah i'm not paying money venmo is just venom spelled with, with the mo with the mo backwards <laughs> I, I there's so much <laughs> shit going on now i can't keep up it's with it so anymore. clever yeah do you feel it's clever no no i don't either <laughs> not clever no what, what's <laughs> what's the next invitational uh, uh well, we're gonna do yours Oh God! We're waiting for your uh, yours to come in, <laughs> and uh, yeah, we're gonna break ranks there. <laughs> I can actually say it here. I will say it here because this will come out before those. Uh-huh. Uh, we're gonna be recording them next month. There's a podcast called Forgotten Cinema. Uh, if you ever heard of them, they're friends with uh, Andrew from the Nomcast. Mm-hmm. Two guys, Andrew, Andrew Morgan. We from know the from, from the Nomcast. Yeah, from the Nomcast. Never heard of them. <laughs> Forgotten Cinema. So they do they do movie reviews. It's two guys, uh, Mike Field and Mike Butler. And they do movie reviews uh, of forgotten movies. They do movies that, like, they did one of The Mask of Zorro. Movies that okay. are out there that maybe people just kind of forget about. Ravenous would be like a good Ravenous. choice. Yeah. Right? I might, I might ask them to do Ravenous so we hear another episode about Ravenous. Uh, they're both going to come on. And the way we're going to do it is since there's uh, three of us plus a guest, uh, we'll do a show for each one of them. They're going to come over. And uh, these are going to be fun. I can't wait to tell you about this one, John. Mm. The first one. Don't know which mic it is. Mike Field or Mike Butler. The Phantom Menace. So we're going to be doing an episode on The Phantom Menace. I just watched that. The second one, see, I haven't. Yeah, thanks. The second one is one I'm actually really excited about because I (laughs) love this as a kid, and I haven't seen it since I was a kid. And when he said it, I was like, well, his first choice was The Monster Squad. But uh, but Matt Wilson uh, from Connecticut Cult Classics picked that. So we're going to do that with Matt at some point. And he went full bore, different direction. Well, not different direction. Midnight Madness. Do you remember that movie? It's that fucking scavenger hunt movie with Michael J. Fox from like 1980. Yeah, I used to watch it. It was on HBO when I was a kid all the time. Yeah, not really. So we're gonna be it doing was, those. I, I David Naughton, right? What's that? David Naughton. David Naughton is Which, in that. Who I just did the panel with at Connecticut Orphan. Yes. Mm-hmm. See, it all ties together. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> so those will be a couple more of the invitations we'll be doing, and then we'll be doing John's, which we're gonna keep secret. Until he gets the uh, right, we said we were going to say it until you you get the DVD. That's right. See ya. <laughs> <laughs> It's over, Johnny. It's over! Nothing is over! Nothing! You just don't turn it off!